Any headphones or anything? Are you no. happy with levels? No, no, no. no. But yeah, he told me about it. I thought I've got to ask him about it. I mean, he got stabbed, so... He got stabbed... I mean, for that, Mike, Steve. He got stabbed three times. Do I want to be about here? Yeah. He didn't just get stabbed once. <clears throat> it wasn't just like a normal stabbing. He got... I remember. Gutted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stabbed and in then, the chest and, and then, then stabbed in the head. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. So all of the paramedics and that basically saved his life. Yeah. Like, but the, the paramedics died. couldn't even come until the police had scouted the area. So he was like just lying there with his guts out in front. He saw his, he was holding his intestines. I'm like. Yeah, I don't remember that bit. I don't remember him telling me that bit. Yeah. That's horrendous, isn't it? That was legit. Anyway, cheers, bro. Anytime, mate. Hey, mate, cheers. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. If I get through this podcast without pissing, be a miracle. Can't, a pint of you meant to drink after your toast. It's bad luck, boys. After you watch it, oh, you, you yeah, got sorry. a toast, yeah, and you got to look them in the eye. That's a different one. <sighs> Mate, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. We always said we'd have this beer. Yeah, yeah. And do this podcast. <clears throat> I've retired. I've retired from the online podcast world. Anyway, that was the last time we did this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I listened to somebody the other day, and the, the amount of technical faults that there are on them, and it's not the same. Yeah, because my one, there was something up with it, weren't there? I remember. Oh, you, yeah. You were, t- yeah you, exactly. You're having teething problems and stuff like that with it. And It was the first time I did it in my little box room upstairs. And it was so echoey. Yeah. It was all right. It got me started. Yeah, but it, like, like I say, teething problems. When yeah. you're doing something like that for the first time. But you I know. bet if you look back and look at the first film you shot, right? Or the first, I don't know, bit of... Uh, what would you call it? Like the videos you did for Joe. You probably look film, back yeah, now. Even them as well. Yeah, my bread and butter stuff. Yeah, yeah, you probably go, oh my God, I'm so much better. Bit, yeah. But the technology's advanced. <clears throat> you advance. But there are still glimmers in those that I see. Does that make sense? So little, little moments where I'm like, yeah, I can see see what was coming through. Then there's other bits you're just like, oh, I wouldn't do that <laughs> in a yeah. million years. Even with like films like Vendetta now. Like I've, I don't watch Vendetta. I haven't watched Vendetta for... I don't think I've watched Vendetta all the way through since I watched it with, with Danny Dyer at a screening back in 2013. I, mean, I don't know why people have gone, why do you, I don't know why I don't watch it. That's when different. It, when it first came on Netflix, I kind of scanned it because it was on Netflix. So I was like, I just want to see my film is on Netflix, but I didn't sit and watch it all. I did. I'll watch it again. Oh. And I looked for your name. It's weird, isn't it? How you yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, directed yeah. by Stephen Reynolds. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's very rare that you'll like, ever be mates with someone who's got a film in the top 10 of Netflix. Yeah, I it suppose so, yeah. What was it? Tre- yeah, it was like trending at not. It was trending, four. yeah. I think it, it, I, it, I think it, it was, it was number one in something. At, at, at one point, it was num- number one in new releases or, no, you know, number one in trending. They have different... They don't have an all-out number one, I don't think, on Netflix. They have various little categories. Number one in something um, at one point, which... It's hard not to be proud of that. You know? yeah. It's a good fucking film as well. I'm not just saying that because you're my mate. It was a good film. Too I liked it. Even yeah. I went in a bit hesitant because like, da- at the time, Danny's career was a bit... It, it wasn't exactly thriving like it is now. Yeah. And that was like, everyone said that was the first really good film he's made since, what's that one that was wicked? Well, there was Football Factory and The Business. Yeah, it was always the, business, the ones. The and Severance is another one that comes up with I him. haven't watched that one yet. Severance is good. The um, Business was class. Business is awesome. I, I love that other dude in it as well. He's, all, he's in The Football Factory too. Tama, Tama Hassan. He just looks hard as nails. Yeah. I nearly uh, did something <coughs> with Tama. Um, yeah, he's in a lot of films, man. Yeah, years ago. So uh, what I do love, a bit of Rise of the Foot Soldier. So violent. Okay. It's horrible. Yeah. Isn't it? I think there's about eight of those movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, I think there's four. Yeah. There's one and two, then there's my No, bear. there's more. There's more. There's, there's, like, there's I think one with Vinnie Jones six. come out. Yeah, that was, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then there's a new one now, um, uh, Pat Tate is based more around that. sort of Craig, yeah. I love Pat Tate, he's yeah. funny as fuck. So there you go. So I think there's about seven. He's a beast, that Craig Fairbrother. Yeah, C- Craig Craig Fairbrass. Fairbrass, yeah. isn't he a beast? Have you yeah. seen that Villian and all that? Craig. Um, Getting all the names wrong. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Have you seen Muscle? Muscle's amazing. Amazing. I've only, I've only seen Muscle because Craig told me to watch it. That was insane. So I sat with Craig <clears throat> about 18 months ago uh, just as a catch up because we keep... Mi- we want to work with each other, but we both want the project to be right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I've not done some foot soldier movies. <laughs> Still, I'm going to say. So we could have worked together many a times, probably. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, I, I, I haven't done those movies. So um, he's known of me even since before Vendetta. 
Um, but we sat down and, and had a a, 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 a coffee about 18 months ago talking about another project. And um, yeah, Muscle, he told me to watch Muscle. And I watched it with my wife and then I was due to go back then and see Craig again, just to, you know, follow up on uh, the thing that we were talking about before, prior. And he was so convincing, my wife's like, just be careful around him. Cause he's, cause he looks, cause he's really scary. He's a big dude, isn't he? And I'm like, he's acting. Yeah. He's acting, right? And when you meet him in real life, he's a little bit like that. Because it's hard not to be like who you are. Like when I bumped into Ryan Reynolds, like he's this, it, it, their mannerisms are obviously the same. You're like, come on, it's not a famous guy from that movie. I mean, he's, he's, what is he, like 6'4", six, 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big. Yeah, but he's 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 just warm and lovely and yeah, I'm sure. yeah, massively approachable. But I remember reading an article on him and he said, I'm always going to play that kind of character because he's like, I'm not the best actor in the world, I know that. Okay. He goes, I'm big, I'm physical, I'm handy. So I'm always going to play a certain... I mean, in Muscle, he was terrifying. Yeah. He's... Brilliant. And I've told him this. Yeah. I said, you're horrible in that movie. Yeah, he is. You're horrible. And he but in the, in the most complimentary way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're supposed to be. He's a good actor. And the, 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 the gravitas and the presence that he has... Brilliant. I love him. Um, whenever he's in a scene, he when he wants to be, he can be terrifying. Mm. And you, you, you're sat there like, and you remember certain bits from like, I've seen the first Rise of the First Soldier and like you say, Muscle. And then there was another one recently, which was really good, Villain. Yeah, um, Villain, yeah. And, and, um, and there's one where he's in a, a prison cell for the whole film. Oh, it's called oh, yeah, something like yeah. Bad Man or, or yeah, yeah. something like that. That was yeah, all right. I haven't seen that yet. I, yeah. knew, I think he was shooting that when we were chatting. <coughs> and... Um, I think I was going to go to a screening of that and I didn't. And I know I haven't seen the movie, but that's just reminded me because I need to watch that now. But I think it's a bit more art house. Mm. Um, but I, I, I want to give it a watch because um, I think he's a phenomenal talent. And, and touch wood, we do get to work with each other. Um, but what that will will be, if, if that happens, it happens when it happens, basically. I'm in no rush. Um, not like I used to be. If it happens and it's right, then I, it, it would be amazing. And hopefully it will be before we both get too old. Do you write now for the love of writing? Do you write when you want to write now or are you are you still in a disciplined mindset of, no, I'm going to sit down every day and I'm going to write? Or do you wait for these creative ideas to come to you? So I've never been that type of writer where I, I like you say, the, the, the latter basically of what you said, which is to be disciplined, to sit down and write every day I've never been that guy um, it doesn't come to me like that if if I have an idea and I get excited about it my process is usually the genesis of the idea so whatever will inspire that first step of creativity um, and if I'm in love with this idea and if I'm um, and if it keeps coming to me I keep thinking about it if it keeps resonating, it keeps doing the, the rounds, um, I'll eventually get to a point where I've just got to write it. Is that what you mean by falling in love with an idea? It just won't leave you? Yeah. Yeah. And and if it possesses me and bothers me, um, they're kind of derogatory terms, but you know what I mean? If it hounds me and it just keeps coming, I'll get to a point where I've, I, I'm, I'm excited to write this now and I'm going to write this screenplay. And, and I... And I get so much of it, and then I figure the rest out. Then I go, right, I've got to plan out this story. But a lot of my process, when I've been writing, I've, I was just developing something recently. Uh, I can't say too much about, but working with the guy who is developing, who's got the rights to this. It's a game, basically. It's a, it's a um, movie adaptation of a popular game. Um, so I've been brought in to write it. Um, and I was talking to him about my process, and he was like, "I, I, I don't know." How. He and he's a writer as well, so yeah. he was trying to get this script written, and he was he was there for a year, and the option was running out on it. And I said, um, "You know, I could do you a screenplay in seven days. I could write you out a screenplay so we can keep this option, because I can see how passionate you are and, and excited you are to do to, for this movie to come to fruition." But he's like, "I haven't got a screenplay. I'm going to lose the option." I was like, well, if you get if it gets to the final hour, give me a shout and I'll smash you out a decent first draft. 
that will get you to keep that option and then you can move forward. And he was like, um, and then he was like, but how do you work? How will you do it? And I said, well, give me the rough basis of what needs to happen. Because the problem with this video game, unlike some video games, is there's no strong narrative. There's no strong story. Like you're just in an open world where something's happened and you've got to survive. That's it. That's all the story is in the big game. Right. So I'm like, I've got my work out for me here. But I've always found a way and, I've, you know, I, he's my friend and I wanted to help him out at the same time because I know what it's like when you're passionate about a project and you can see that it's falling away from you and it felt like I could be the missing link he needed so um, I went in and you know knocked out the script um, in, in a week um, and it was just you know bare bones really it needs developing but I, I, I will the best way to describe it is you give me maybe the first act or the first 20 minutes if it if imagine it's the finished film give me the first 20 minutes and then i'm off and i almost let my characters go on the the characters once i created those characters they will tell me the story so i'll be writing dialogue where i won't even know where the scenes go in but I'll just be writing dialogue between these people and imagine if I was in that situation or if I imagined other people in that situation, what would they say? What would, they, what would this person, when I know who this person is now, what would he do there? Well, he'd say this or do this and then that would motivate this and he would say that and that would motivate that. And sometimes it ends up writing itself. Well, isn't that what Van Vendetta was? Didn't you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong because we had this conversation years ago, but didn't you say what would I do if someone killed my mum and dad? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was class. Yeah. You were like, well, what, what would I do to them if I got hold of them? Yeah. And then that's what, that's what Vendetta basically that's was, That's basically right? Vendetta. So you've got to, you, so at the same time, you have got to be careful because <laughs> if something bad happens to someone I love now, all eyes are going to be like, yeah. well, someone gets police so will be like, pulled right, down, watching down their you throat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Concrete pulled down their throat or pulled in half by a car. Um, but that's well, that, how you could start a potential idea or a film, right? Just with just with that thought. Massively. Yeah. So Ma where did Danny Dyer come from then? His character. Do you, do you just think that up out of thin air? Does that come to you? How how do you get that? How how do you get right? Really, this is how he is. This is how he moves. This is how he talks. This. Do you know what I mean? How do yeah. you? Because I can always get to that idea stage, but then I can never get to the to the to the imagination stage of like these people coming to fruition. Okay. Um, every movie is different. And with how Vendetta worked was I'd done a short film called Snowman um, with Al, uh, a friend of mine called Al Peasland, um, who's actually Jeff Thompson's brother-in-law. That's how we got to know each other. Al wanted to explore um, uh, acting. He wanted to be, you know, see what see what it was like to be in front of the camera a little bit. Um, I always um, that's admirable to me when someone wants to do that. And I'll always take a chance on certainly people who want to um, have, well, generally have a go at something they've never done before. Mm. Um, and I've had people in the past who have said, I want to explore acting. If you've got anything coming up, can you, you know, maybe put me in and try me out? And I've always um, honoured that where I can and if I can. Um, and Al, Al was keen. So I was like, you know, I've got this thing and, it would suit you and you know we, we anyway we shot we shot this short version i'd written it as a feature film um and i shot like a what you call a proof of concept which is a short film which kind of gives you a taster of what the feature would be like maybe if you want to get producers to invest in you mm -hmm. and the movie um and the long and short of it is i had found a producer called jonathan sothcott who was producing sort of low budget micro budget um, actioners, thrillers, um, gangster movies, and I um, was sending it out to a whole bunch of people, and he was kind of one of the only ones that responded. He liked the short, he liked um, the revenge aspect of the movie, but wasn't really keen on the albino, the lead character was an albino. Um, so I was going for a bit of a kind of Bruce Willis unbreakable. He was a bit of a mythological figure. He was kind of um, a bit of a superhero, whereas Jonathan wanted to ground it much more in reality. 
long and short of it is he sort of said, look, I love the revenge element. Um, what do you think about Danny Dyer playing a lead role? And we changed that character and we turned him into something else. And I was like, well, will not it make him former military or current military? Because that's usually my default of characters, sure. lead characters, because, you know, I've got friends in the military and friends who have served. And I, I, I've always been, um, I've always admired um, that that character dynamic, certainly in movies like Outlaw, Sean Bean, coming back from, you know, the war. And it's, um, I, was, I could just see that for some reason and pitch that to him. And then I almost reworked the Snowman movie to then suit Danny as a you know yeah. uh, a, a, a military guy uh, coming home from war to avenge his, his, his family's death so that was kind of easy-ish i suppose but at the same time it was it was difficult because i wanted our the audience to see a different side of danny i i didn't want him to be saying the c word every five seconds and doing what he has always done in his movies which is usually that there's, there's sometimes a comedy aspect to what Danny does phenomenally well, which is, you know, the guy in over his head and how he deals with that situation is always beautiful to watch. But I didn't want to, you know, I certainly didn't want to do that. There was a lot more reverence in terms of tone um, that I wanted to uh, explore. And I, I wanted to see a different side of Danny and I wanted the audience to see a different side of Danny. So when I was writing it, I almost wasn't, I was anti anti Danny uh, in the way that I was writing it even though I knew he was going to play it it could have been written for it could have been written without him as a template so I, I kind of leant against or leaned away from the the benefit of having which is good for a writer having a having someone you know you're writing mm. for you can write to all of their strengths and I had that template but I didn't I didn't you know capitalize on that I went in a different direction so that was how that Danny's character came about for Vendetta, yeah. People love like revenge and vengeance too. I know, right? I don't, I don't think I've met a guy that hasn't at some point fallen in love with some kind of revenge movie. Yeah. There's something... Do you know what? It's an easy fix for anger. You've got to be careful because obviously it's a delicious... It's almost like... what would you? How would you describe it? It's like... It's like porn. It's like the, the porn of violence. You know what I mean? It's like... That guy did that to me. What do you want to do? I want to... Can I swear? Can we swear? Dude, you can say whatever the fuck you want. On this <laughs> do you know what? I've probably already sweared. I remember I did my <laughs> talk. Because I was oh, just... Okay. When you said the C word, I was just thinking, <laughs> I don't think anyone's said anything swearing yet. So, no, right. we haven't. So I, when I did my talk and I introed out of Mecca, I remember going and I swore and I caught myself and someone went, Steve, you already swore like five times. I was like, have I? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well done. I'm, I'm proud of myself. But um, no, he, he, what was I saying? Revenge. So, so revenge, that's what it is. You know, that guy did that to me. I'm going to go and kick his teeth down. His yeah, throat. it's appealing. But you've got to be careful because, the, you know, the, 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 the day and age we're in now. Um, I mean, well, it doesn't matter, you know, what, what um, where you are in terms of, you know, uh, progression and civilization you've got to be careful with it no matter what. And some people will flash more than others. And some people have more rage than others. And some people have more anger. Some people can be calculated. Danny's character was a little bit more calculated in there, although he was um, rageful and angry as you would be. It was kind of a little bit more internalised um, sometimes. Um, and that was what I was kind of going for because someone with his training would be able to internalise it. So he's not just going around and... You know, smashing the crap out of people with baseball bats. He's Got you. he's kind of um, a applying his skills as a soldier and what he's been taught to to do it as I suppose as calculated as he can. Doesn't just because he's doing it in a calculated way doesn't mean that there's there's not violence. No, of course. Yeah. And the the problem with revenge is I don't, have you seen this film? I can't think of what it's called. Now. It might be called The Firm. Actually, it was before ID, and I think it had like Phil Mitchell in. And, and oh yeah, a long time seen? ago. Yeah, um, it's basically two f local. Is Ray Winston in it? Is that is that not? Am I thinking? I might be thinking of um, no, something else. No, I don't think so. Anyway, it's that typical. So if I do something to you, if I hurt you, and you go wrong, I'm going to get that guy back. And then you come back to me. I go, fucking hell, he's I'm going to come back. I'm going to go back at him. Yeah, it just escalates. And then it's they reckon it's how war starts. It's like, well, you did this. Yeah. We're going to do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you, and it goes back and it forward. Just, it never ends until 
like in the film, it starts off as this little local gang fighting. Someone gets fucking shot in the end. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's that. It's back and forth. There's a lot to be said about, yeah, escalation. And then, you know, there's a bit, there are things you can talk about for hours, like power of forgiveness and things like that. Vendetta was never going to be that movie. It's a Danny Dyer movie. You know, he's not going to be, you know, forgiving his victims. No, but isn't it mad how you che- you're, like, you're cheering on the guy who's pouring cement down people's throats? You are in the same no, you way. Like in, you, you want him to catch all those people and fuck yeah, them off, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. You're cheering on the bad guy. It always amazes me how films get you to cheer on the bad guy. Yeah. Well, he's kind of the anti-hero, um, I suppose, in 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 layman's terms. He's the protagonist of the movie, and essentially, he's the he is the good guy, but he's he's not acting in accordance with what is deemed. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. A, a relevant response I get yeah but I think that's what we would love about a character like that it's probably the thing that we wouldn't have the balls skills or courage to do if someone killed our parents exactly but that's why we love movies yeah. and that's why we love video games and that's why we know certainly if we are of some sort of um, um, you know um, what am I trying to say normal um, thinking that you can go and enjoy that and then switch off and and, and 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 go home and yeah. you know you're 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 not you don't come away from that movie going I'm gonna do that <laughs> yeah you, you can you go in you go for the escapism you go for the fantasy because that's what Vendetta is Vendetta is a fantasy you know we, we're not trying to be um, sort of yeah revenge happens in real life oh well, yeah I'm maybe sure, not in sure the way it does, that it, yeah. it played out in that particular film but yeah. people some people spend their whole life mate craving revenge. Yeah. You hear it all the time. Have you ever heard, like, I know this lovely lady, mate, lovely, and she split up with her husband like 20 years ago who cheated on her, and she's still angry. Yeah. Yeah. And she's Hal still, hath no fury than a st- woman scorned. Yeah. <laughs> like, she, yeah. She still brings it into convo. It's the reason why her life is the mess that it is now. And I'm like, it's so sad, man. I, it's not, like, I get it, but it's, it's not good. It's not healthy. You've got to leave stuff. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's very hard, And I've, I've, I've had stuff in my childhood, which I wouldn't go into. It's just too too personal. Um, uh, n- nothing um, too egregious, but stuff that probably could have affected me as an adult. Um, and I have, I've, I've let it go and moved on. Um and and that's kind of about all that's that's that's, that's said, you know, that I could, you know, can say on it. But if I didn't, I'd be a different guy. I'd be a different guy now if I didn't go. Well, that was that, and that's happened back then. And you know, I I forgive them, and that's 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 the way it is. And you, you know, you 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 move on where you can. Uh, you have to you hold on to stuff like that it's going to make you sick I think well that's the thing this is what Jeff has always encouraged and, and taught me is like the forgiveness like if I forgive you for something it's not for your benefit it's for mine Yeah. so I can move on because me resenting you and hating you and wanting you to fucking suffer is poison in my body Yeah. but it's it's strangely appealing too there's still someone in my life I just know if I could just forgive them and move on my life, my life would be better right be less hateful less resentful but would you feel better if you punched them in the face yeah you would wouldn't you yeah there is an immediate gratification with physical violence to make sure that someone else feels much worse than <coughs> how they made you feel because it's like that is my that will be my immediate victory i did you over and i've made you feel worse than you made me feel so now i'm going to feel better because I did that. In Texas, I heard this the other day, they're allowed a straight fight out now. It's, it's legal. Like, if two men declare, if me and you say, like, we're going to have a fight, the police, apparently, this is what I heard, can't intervene because it's an agreement. Let's go. Yeah, right? Texas is one of two states, I think, that do... That do, do you know what? It doesn't surprise me. That's, that that which, is Texas is the state. It's mental, it? right? Yeah. But, like, what I mean is, like, I get the old-fashioned ways of settling scores sometimes and then these guys who have fights and then they shake hands after and they go the, the beef's done so yeah. but what's harder is when it's emotional and you want emotional revenge someone you know when someone's hurt you not on a physical level yeah emotionally and yeah you, and then and then you want like to fucking destroy before, their life yeah and you want that catharsis you want yeah. that that again like i it. said emotionally i want to cripple them yeah you because want... i want them to feel worse than how they made me feel that's how i approach vendetta and that's how he applied himself was, what can I do to these people that's going to be worse than what they did to my family? And then that will make me feel better. Yeah. 
It's a great story. Um, and that, but that's that is that's revenge, but it's also anger, um, and that's where you, in reality, obviously have to be careful. Um, They're still it's, going strong though, aren't they? Revenge movies, and I don't think they'll ever die. No, and one of my favourite movies ever was The Crow. Yeah, one of yeah, the greatest right. revenge fantasies <laughs> ever made, you know. So Vendetta was certainly an homage to like the Crow and, and one of my favourite superheroes, which is the Punisher. Um and, and you know, my dream would be to to do a Punisher movie or have worked on that Punisher TV show. Um and um yeah, I guess I guess it's it's an e I think it's an easy em- it's an easy emotion to capitalise on. Yeah. To a certain extent, and and make that it's it's like I said, it's it's delicious um, entertainment, revenge. Because again, <clears throat> you watch movies because you want to experience, or certainly I do, it's the escapism of seeing something that you wouldn't see or experience or hear in reality. And some people's threshold is different. Like horror, I can't, you know, some horror movies, again, will give you that same feeling but it's relative to yourself and what your threshold is some people have watched some horrendous horrors i can't watch horror and films. and that but that will that will that that will <clears throat> that will be their fix compared to me watching something like the car chase at the end of bad boys yeah or the navy seals going in during the rock and listening to that music and the orchestration of hans zimmer's music and li- i usually watch movies now with my headphones on so i have cans and I turn it up full blast, basically because I'm considerate to my neighbours. <laughs> but also, it's the only way, really, I think, to watch and truly have an immersive experience while watching movies at home. And I, it was, and it was an accident that that happened because my wife was working at home during COVID. <laughs> and I was oh, sat yeah, down. Put the earphones on. <laughs> so I was sat downstairs yeah, playing, like, playing my video games and it's got me shoes on the phone. Yeah. And I'm quite I'm quite verbal. Like I talk to myself in the house. I wander around the house just talking to myself yeah. and talking to like random things. And I'm playing this I'm playing Tomb Raider. I went retro. I got my old PlayStation one out. Nice. And I'm playing Tomb Raider. <laughs> Flipping snake jumped out at me. And Olga's on the phone like <laughs> to some client and I'm like, oh my God, there's a snake in the grass. <laughs> and she's just like, <laughs> I'm laughing and that. And then she was like, we, it, was, it was a joke. It's still a joke now. Like if we see a snake, I'm like, there's a snake in the grass. And then I got the, I got some headphones then. And it was amazing. Video yeah. games, movies. I used to love Tomb Raider. Happy accident. I love Tomb Raider. Yeah, I used to have a right crush on her. Who didn't? Lara Croft. Who did not those, have a crush on Lara Croft? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. She, was a, unless she was a badass. Of course she was a badass, yeah. 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 The movies are great. No, Do you I think guys would really like a badass woman though in real life? Um, or is again, is it like that film thing of like the fantasy is better than reality? I think, again, it's subjective. It depends on your taste. Um, it depends on the guy, doesn't it? I mean, some guys are really intimidated by... Badass women. Badass women, but not you know, just strong, assertive women who, who 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 know what they want and they're articulate and they're smart and they're probably more articulate and smarter than you and i i think i think that's attractive but that's me you know it what I mean? is but would then they find you attractive because you're not the badass that they are again it depends on them so they might not look for that personality i don't think i could be with someone like that long term yeah because I'm, I'm, you, you basically, you're both alphas. I'm not saying alphas can't be together, but you're both alphas, you're both type A characters. Yeah. And if those strong personalities are too strong, I personally think that there'd be a very short relationship. You know, I don't know. Um, and happily, I'm not going to find out because, you know, I, I, I love Olga and, um, you know, touch wood, we'll be together, you know, till the end of time. So, um, it depends on what 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 guys guys look for as as a generalization. It's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard, it is hard to say. Uh, for me personally, like I said, I um I find it yeah I find it quite attractive long term. I don't know if it worked just because more more going forward in terms of um, 
I don't know, building things together and that, you know, strong opinions maybe. Yeah, no, I get oh, that. I want it this way. No, I want this way. And then you, if you're both yeah. super intelligent, you're both articulate, yeah. you're both great at arguing, no one's going to... It's like, see, it's see. like um, porn stars, isn't it? How many guys jerk off to porn all the time? It's like, would you want your missus to be a porn star? No, no one would. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't think... Not. No, the vast, vast, vast majority wouldn't. But it's the thing they find attractive. It's the thing they're, they're jerking off over. Does yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's, so it's like, the you know that blonde immediacy, hair, yeah. yeah, the immediacy yeah. of that. They 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 look amazing. They're doing all of those disgraceful things that men probably fantasy over. Um, but you wouldn't. That's what I said. But you wouldn't want your missus to do it. It's that kind of thing. It's a weird thing. Porn's a weird thing. Like men are literally getting off to the thing that they would hate if their missus became. I wouldn't mind if. As long as it was just with me, yeah? Happy days. No, but I'm, let's talk visuals, <laughs> right? The fucking blonde hair, massive tits, yeah. real short skirt, <laughs> and behaving in a way, yeah, like you say, just like Yeah, a yeah, I suppose. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like guys are getting off to that. Yeah. But it's weird because it's the thing that you would hate. But then does that goes back to escapism then? You know, I don't it's, know. It goes back I to think then it's what we were saying about. It's fucked up thing, mate. It's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Isn't it fucked up? <laughs> Uh, it is it's, it's messed up it's the same with films it's like you're cheering for these fucking psychopathic killers mm -hmm. yeah kill him yeah, yeah it's dark yeah it's but, really dark even boxing matches at some point you're like there's you kill all hands up fucking kill him yeah when you it gets tribal tribal so is that what it borns down to is it in our DNA as and are we talking about males or are we just talking about humans because Girls can get Larry at boxing match as well. I've seen. Right? Oh, big um, time! Big but is time. that is that tribal and is that bore into our DNA that when I don't know do we do we lose control emotionally when our emotion you know our emotions are what should I say our primal emotions are they to are they to fucking fight? I've said the F word, done it. <laughs> but uh, but is is that what it comes down to and? Is that then an immediate fix for some sort of need? Yes, I think fucking and fighting is in our DNA. I'm not saying that you go out there and fuck everything and fight because like, you wouldn't survive in society today. You, you just wouldn't. So you have to find <laughs> healthy ways. In prison, yeah, of course like, you would. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, how do I fit into the rules of society and get my needs met. This is why training, combat sports are healthy. Million percent. And this is where finding a woman that you love and can have sex with is really important. So if you're yeah. in a sexless relationship and you're not doing any form of physical activity, yeah, you're going to be depressed to fuck. Yeah, and and again, when you say you know fucking and fighting in and in, in, uh, in, in a healthy way, yeah, I think there's yeah. a way to do that. Of course, mate, healthily. Yeah. Um, but I. Again, go back to what you were saying, you know, with 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 the immediate, the, is it the immediate fix of, um, like at the boxing match, like you say, and people are raging, oh, kill him, can knock him out, kill him. Um, oh, have we lost, do you, have you lost control then? Or are you leaning into that and you're like, potentially, I, I'm having a but great I, time here. Yeah, but it's, it's like Vendetta. It's like you sit and you can tap into that. Well, I'm not going to, but what would I do if someone yeah, touched yeah, my yeah, fucking yeah, mum and dad? Yeah. Again, That's what I love about what you do. It's like you can get all that shit in your head and you can create a fictional character and then they could do what you would want to do. To oh, somebody. hugely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I want to write because I'm like, I haven't got the courage to do these things in real. Jordan Peterson says this. He said, most men, and he's not saying this is wrong, he said, they'll never have the courage to do the disgusting stuff they really want to do in life. No, yeah. Yeah, so if someone fucks with my mum and dad, if I want to if I've got, want to go and kill them, I've got to have the courage to know I'm going to serve a life sentence. Most men might not have the courage to yeah. do that, right? So what can they do? They can fantasise about it. They can deep instant go, yeah. oh, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to, but let me just imagine fucking killing them. Yeah. Do you know what or is there, is there, I'll tell, tell you another lovely thing as well, is it, it's acceptance of, like you said, the bravery to know you're going to do a life sentence, oh. but then is there the acceptance that I'm going to do a life sentence. I'm happy. You almost make an agreement you with yourself. You make a trade, don't you? Yeah. I, that is a good trade-off. I would rest easy in my prison cell for the rest of my days knowing that these guys went out of this world feeling the worst pain. So no, you would do it in real life? The then, biggest yeah. regret. I'm not saying I would. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm doing this podcast to get fucking dark. <laughs> well, what would you do in real life? Like, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Like, would, would, uh, would do you know you what? You won't know until it happens. No. Uh, do you know what? I probably would. 
what go out and kill them i would I, if someone if someone did something to ho- horrible to olga i i i i probably i would want some form of i would want them to feel i would want them to feel worse than whatever happened to her got you here's how i see it i think if i caught them in the act doing like so if i nipped around my mom and dad's and i walked in and there was a guy burgling the house and doing something terrible i think in the moment i'd fucking kill him but i think if it was like because you'd, you'd lose your i'd shit. be there yeah you'd I'd see the there. red mist yeah and you wouldn't be able to control and you'd react i think i'd react and I, it, yeah but i think if it was six months later and i bumped into someone that hurt my mom and dad i think that'd be my only savior some a bit of time yeah does that make sense well time's the greatest healer sort of or it can fuck you up even more because you well, spent six months thinking about all, thinking over about it. what you do it and yeah. then you see them and you go boom you know you explode yeah and then all of that rage comes back but again it comes it, it's it's relative to that that person i was working with someone the other day and she was telling me i, I can't get angry I, I never get angry don't believe people who say that my mate says that i'm like don't get I'm angry i never get angry Bullshit. and I, I i do believe it i believe nah. I've, I've, you know I've, I've only worked with her briefly but she said i've had the uh, i'm incapable of completely just losing my shit she'd probably flip though if she did yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have you ever yeah, had a girlfriend like that's like free. really like calm and cool? I had a girlfriend that was like really chilled, really, but when she flipped, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. I was like, oh, oh. You know, Ground it's zero. more powerful that way though because if you're like angry all the time, it don't mean much, but if you're one of these cool, calm people and then you yeah. boom, explode, it's, everyone goes, what the fuck? Let's yeah, leave, that's why you never, do, they never do that. Yeah, alone, yeah, yeah, this guy's really gone. If they yeah. never go. Yeah, you can use it well out. or yeah. you, yeah, if you're angry all the time, it loses its magic. Of course it does, yeah. Because if you're if you're barking again, there was something I heard recently that that it loses its weight. If you're doing that all the time, you're not going to get anything out of someone. It was yeah. a leadership thing I heard. Um, if you're if you're doing that all of the time, you know. And I say this to actors as well. You've got nowhere to go, yeah. So, kind of if you go in at that level all the time, you've got nowhere to go to then. If you do need to emphasise what you're doing with a little bit of anger and a little bit of volume, yeah. Um, so if you're at that all the time, it's like you say, it becomes almost um, loses its just, power. Just loses its power. Yeah. What do you do then if you're not right? Like, so if that's your way of getting out somebody's. But by the way, I don't think these dark thoughts and this anger is wrong. So I'm like, I think it's it's normal. I think that's important to say. As long um, as you've got sorry to interrupt you. As as long, not, I think as long as you've got a outlet well that's what and i mean that's yeah. my outlet yeah i think that the thought i don't think you should punish yourself for having these thoughts yeah i think obviously you've got to do something with them you can't let them destroy you like that so when you're not writing and creating like how do you deal with just like that the average stuff like anger that comes up in your life or do you find that you're not as good handling anger when you're not being creative versus when you are um that's a good shout uh i think as a as a generalization, just through maturity, I'm a lot less hot headed than I was when I was younger. Anyway, that that is either through maturity or just growth and working on myself. How do you know? So I'm 44 now, yeah. mate. You still got such a young energy, man. And yeah, someone else said that the other day as well. Yeah, Honestly. I was like, oh, I'll take that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, you have. You've got like one of the things I love about Joe Rogan, similar to you, man. <laughs> He's like, he's got his shit together and he's a smart guy and he's good, but he's also got this real kiddish thing about him where he still likes to play. Oh, I'm so playful. Dude. That's what I mean. He, yeah. he loves playing pool and oh, having yeah. fun. I'm a kid you know what at mean? heart. I'm a kid at heart. Yeah. And, and that's probably why I stay a bit youthful because a lot of my friends have seen me from school and they're like, you can Peter Pan, what's going on? <laughs> um, some of my hair's falling out now, so that's, that's it's, it's losing, I'm losing my youthful edge at I the know, minute. Mate, look at that. Yeah, mine's going. Yeah, mine's nearly look. there. Yeah, yeah. Mine's all gone at the back. It's look. never that bad on yeah. when I look in the mirror. Yeah, but I've been wearing hats my whole life. I know. And it's only at the back. So when I look in the mirror at front, I'm like, looks all right. I, I don't mean, care what anyone a, else thinks. Considering a hair transplant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's the only thing letting the side down for me in terms of like, I ain't, my wrinkles ain't, too, I ain't yeah. really got wrinkles and I ain't really going grey. Yeah. My baldy bit's the only yeah, bit that's letting oh. the side down going, you know. But but, but as, as in what you were saying, I think that, that's a phenomenal question. Um, I don't really have a lot of anger, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm passionate. And I've, I've always said, you know, be careful um um 
comparing anger to passion. And, you know, if you're a passionate man and you're a creative, it can be misinterpreted as anger. Um, you know, you watch Ramsey lose his shit. Is he a passionate man or is he an angry man? He's a passionate chef. But people could just go, he's an angry man, he's angry people as fuck. People do. Well. People yeah, call of course him a bully do. and all or is this. He, or is he, I mean, a lot of it might be for TV now because he's got a huge TV career. Has he always been like that? Probably. Are most chefs like that in the kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I... But I are had, they passionate or I, are they angry? I had a chef on, Paul Foster, and I think he he knew Ramsey or had worked, knew someone who worked alongside him before Ramsey got famous. He's like that in real life. Yeah. Yeah, he'll fucking kill you if you make something wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but like, he's an old school, yeah. hardcore, zero tolerance bloke who's passionate about what he does. Legend. One of the best. Love him. Yeah, one but of the look best. Look at him. He's, he's one of the most famous chefs in the world. Yeah. So, I just think, I, I've certainly mellowed. I've worked on myself over the years. There was a time where I was really chasing the movies hard i oh, know i wanted to be that young hotshot director <clears throat> and i felt like time was against me i always felt like time was against me i wanted to be that baby director that was like you know this who this hotshot rookie that's come along he's amazing so i was i was always gunning quite hard um movies and creative my imagination was wild as a child uh, um it's it's calmed down a lot now but the imagery that would go through my head, the 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 content, the dark thoughts, um, um, were were all fantasies. But they were because I'd grown up loving movies and anything that I, again, it's escapism, and I would almost escape into my own little reality sometimes. I was like a Walter Mitty type character. Um, um, probably still am to, to an extent. I think most creatives are. Um, and I um, enjoyed the process of, like, like I say, something like Vendetta. Creating something like Vendetta was no different to writing my first story. I wrote stories as a child instead of scripts. And I was 14 and I wrote a fantasy futuristic um, movie about road races in the badlands of a post-apocalyptic world that was kind of an inspiration from a Mega Drive game called Road Rash and a load of B-movie side, um, a B -movie, um, VHS films I rented from the video shop. Um, and that was it. And it's no different in, in what you know came through with, with Vendetta. Yeah. Um, but that was that was always good for me. I I haven't written anything other than like I said, the one I was sort of uh, uh, commissioned to do um, off my own back for about. Well, it sounds like it sounds like a long time for me, but it's probably about eighteen months. Mm. Yeah, I wrote a I wrote a I wrote a revenge movie. <laughs> the first one since Vendetta, to be fair, called, called Butcher Boy, and um, yeah, it's got. It's so, it's so vendetta. Um, but I wrote it because I was like, it was again, it come from nowhere. Kept having these ideas about this character. Worked in a butcher, used to be a gangster. Wants, wants to better his life, doesn't want anything to do with the old world. Get, and he gets pulled out, the old John Wick. Gets pulled out of retirement. Got to go after these guys who's done something egregious to his family. Um, it's hard when you pitch that, you're like, that sounds like 30 of the movies. And I'm a big believer in now is it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Because it's so hard to come up with a new art, you know, with something mm. fresh and new. And it is, in, I would say, nearly impossible for you to watch a movie and not go, c c that was basically this and that. You know, you will have seen pretty much everything done before now because of the influx of movies and, yeah. and entertainment and, you know, uh, so many different variations of stories and character. Um, it's hard to come up with something fresh. No, you're right. There's not many new ideas now. Mate, isn't it insane that back in the day when we were young, like, if you wanted to watch a film, you had to get there before me, like Blockbuster. They only had, like, 12 VHS videos of this top film and you had to get there first. Yeah. 
if not if you if you had it i can yeah, watch yeah, it yeah 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 and, you like, to, and you'd be waiting at the shelf yeah you'd be yeah. waiting at the you counter to bring it back by two days seven time. o'clock seven o'clock yeah. all of the returns would come in i remember doing that with back to the future do you remember that it's um, insane i'm waiting to see what would come back at yeah. seven o'clock um is it i think there's a lot to be said about that now everyone's got a blockbuster video shop and more in their living room yeah who absolutely. ever thought that would happen yeah, uh, and the, it, it, yeah, everything's changed now. So before, do you remember when they used to drop like a new episode every Monday, for example? There you now go, yeah. X Files. Yeah, six episodes. Here you go, all at once. Boom, binge, boom, boom binge, binge. Yeah, yeah. Ask, ask someone what happened in it a week later. They won't yeah, tell you. No. Have you seen Devil's Hour? No. Fucking phenomenal. Amazon. Is that Amazon? I think you told me about that before. Oh, dude, please watch that. Yeah. yeah. So th- this big dream that you're talking about, you know, when you were younger, have you like in a healthy way let that go now? And have you let it go in a way that you're like, I'm done with that fucking goal or I'm going to let it go, but it's still my dream. I'm just not attached to it anymore. Um, do you know what? It's a little bit of like, not to sit on the fence, but it's a little bit of everything that you said. It's okay. it's hard to articulate. It's a kind of intrinsic emotion more than anything. But what I do know is that there was a time in my life where I put the brakes on a little bit, got a bit of perspective. Um, and it, it, it just wasn't happening for me. It really wasn't happening. And it didn't matter what I tried. Nothing was happening. And this is after Vendetta, after the WWE movies, um, and after developing as many connections as I could on the other side of the pond in LA and here. No, I couldn't, everything I did, I hit a wall. Every email I sent would either come back, unreply, no response, ignored. Um, everything I tried wasn't working. Um, I was banging my head against the wall. I was depressed. I was drinking. Um, it was all I wanted in the world. And I thought I'd had a little bit of a break. Mm. Not a massive break. Vendetta's not, you know, an award-winning movie and the WWE movies aren't, but... I'm a guy that can go in and shoot movies um, efficiently, um, cost-effectively. Um, and I've got a lot to offer in terms of the screenplays that mm. I've built over the years. I've got like a small library of my own spec screenplays I've been writing. It was a big deal though, mate, wasn't it? When, when Vendetta came out. I mean... Not to me. No. I think on the outside it was like, oh, st- finally Steve's met, made. And, but then straight Everyone after you got thought, WWE deal, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it weren't just but that. But that it was, was like, only because nothing happened after Vendetta over here in this country. Noth- no, do- nothing happened. Yeah. No, I, I would go and knock on doors, like either via, you know, when you say knock on doors, I'm not saying, you know, either via email or trying to get a recommendation yeah. or blah, blah, blah. Because I was never really good. That was always my weakness is that I'm not a great, I'm not great at reaching out. Once I'm in the room with someone, I'm great. But I seem to just not be very good at getting in the room with them, making that connection. Can you? Can yeah. we go for a coffee? Can you just blah, blah, blah? It just, it's so hard. Um, but once I do... It's because you're a writer. I'm flying, yeah. I suppose it's you're a writer. something to do with that. Yeah. You know, there's, you, Mate, you, all creatives find that kind of shit hard, I think, because they're brilliant at creating. Yeah. You know, they like to sit on their own or in a coffee shop and, and write good shit. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, they're not... They can be introverts. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm a fucking huge extrovert, you know. So, like I said, when I'm in front of them, I'm great. Yeah. I went over and had, like, one meeting with WWE and I got two movies out of yeah. it. They, they were the only... They were the only ones really that saw me. So if the yeah. other guys had saw me, you know. Well, that's what was a bit of a surprise because if Vendetta had come out and it had gone, oh, another shit Danny Dyer movie, or, you know what I mean? It, but it was the opposite. Yeah, People it kind saying, of showed him in a bit more of a better light for mate, audiences. It, 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 it got some good reviews. It got some really good reviews. Begrudgingly. Yeah, the begrudging reviews. Well, I think like, at the time, pe- people almost, I don't know why, didn't want Danny Dyer to do well. No. I don't know why. So I was up against it no matter yeah, what. Yeah. So for that to come out and people go, yeah. it's actually all but right. even now when you mention his name, people kind of like just have a little chuckle or laugh. And yeah. It's like, um, oh, but I He's know. certainly much more of a, not only is he more of a household name, but he's regarded in a much yeah. more positive light well, than he was. On, went on to do that before fucking EastEnders gig, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he did EastEnders and a few and other I'll tell you what I love him on... Um, 
Keith Lemon's show. When he show. goes on Keith Lemon, he calls, yeah, calls him Malcolm. Malcolm. Let's do that now. Let's do that. Let's <laughs> What's do that, that show called? Celebrity Juice. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Mate, I'm going to open this dirty monster. Do it, mate. Do it, do it, I'm dirty, open monster. This dirty monster. But in, in response to, obviously, that's a, that's a big question because it's, yeah. it's certainly huge in, in terms of my canon. I have let it go because it was becoming a bit like a parasite. Well, I remember you saying to me, I would rather die. Than make movies. Than not make not movies. Not make movies, yeah. And I remember you movies. saying that. And at the time, I was like, that's both terrifying <laughs> and amazing at the same time. Because I was like, what dedication? But what if it don't? Is Steve going to be depressed and kill himself? Kill himself, yeah. Yeah. It never got there. Um, I certainly had some some dark days. And luckily, my big, beautiful boy, Jax, would be uh, sat next to me. And I, I always oh. see that bit in Afterlife where your man's throwing the pills oh. and the dog stops him. Damn. It was never that bad. But you know, he he was certainly a a therapy to just have company through days where I'd get up in the morning and, and, and I'd be like, I I don't I'm got I've got nothing to do today. I've got no work. All of the bread and butter stuff is just kind of sporadic. Um, no one's replying to emails. I've got no movies to do. Olga's gone to work. You what am I have, doing today? You were the first person I called when ben, Benny when Benson died. You were the first person I called. Cause yeah, because you, you knew what I had gone through. Well, dogs, mate, tough. dogs. When you when you've just described that, like no work, no direction, Olga's out. When you have a dog, they're the they're the reason to get out of bed and go for a walk. Sure, aren't and, they? Because they don't give a shit. No, no. What's happened with Vendetta and stuff? No, he doesn't care. All he knows is I love this guy. Yeah, and he knows I love him. And we trust each other, and that's it. That's yeah. it. it that, and that's what I love about animals and, and pets, um, is that there's no judgment. It's pure. It's the probably one of the most pure relationships you can have with another creature, because it's about devotion. And if you're good to me, I'll be good to you. And if you love me, I'll love you back. Uh, depending on the animal, cats can be a little bit more skittish. <laughs> Um, I've learned that with my neighbour's cat, who has kind of fell in love with me a little bit and comes every day to hang out. Um, same with the squirrels when I was going and visiting yeah. them in the flipping. How do you get squirrels to sit on your shoulder? <laughs> You're the only guy I know. Squirrels <laughs> fucking run a mile when I go near them. I don't know. Yeah, quite, quite, quite they literally like leg it. Well. I'm yeah. like, try yeah. and be nice and they're like, out of here. I, I, I don't know. I've always, I don't know. Animals have always kind of always come up and said hello. And Yeah, well, that's I how I know you've got a good sent... soul, man. Oh, thanks. No, I'm <laughs> serious. Right. Yeah, okay, that's good to know. If, if I Mate, I'm serious. If dogs love you, like Benson, I, I remember Benson being really funny with everyone, but he fucking loved you. Oh, yeah, we used to call, he'd bite my arm yeah, and I'd wrestle mate, with him. With I him. loved him. He was and gorgeous. then I see pictures of you on Instagram with a, uh, a squirrel sitting on your shoulder. I'm like, <laughs> and then my neighbour's cat, man, just yeah. comes up and like, cuddles up. And like, that. Some people just attract animals. And... I think so, yeah. I think they, and they have a great, maybe some of them have a great sense of um, good judge of character. Um, and and yeah, Jack's got me through some the late great Jack's, by the way. Yeah, he, he got me through Beast. some phenomenally dark days. Um, but the key thing was to just endure. I'm quite a resilient guy. Um, I I basically took I got to a point where I was like, look, this this thing is this is like a parasite now. It's driving me. Um, and it was ma it was it was making my relationship with Olga a little bit more tough. Mm unnecessarily Olga never felt like she was number one this 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 goal was dream was always number one and I didn't like that either and in about 2018 2019 I made a deal with myself that if I never make a movie ever again I have to be okay with that no one sat me down and talked to me it was something I just went through myself um, and I kind of just figured it out which usually that's how I deal with problems you kind of just need to leave me alone for a week or two weeks or a month or a year and I'll get there but I've got to process it and go through it and endure mm. and build that resilience myself um, and some people will turn to I don't know church or God or you know certainly when people lose um, a loved one um, they're so lost they need something um, and um, yeah this was and this was before Jack's passed away and I, I made a deal a couple of deals with myself one was to make Olga feel like number one um, was that a hard decision? It, that was not a hard decision no because it no. Seems, seems like it's often man's biggest battle which like do I pursue what I really want in life or it, do I dedicate myself to it, the woman that I love? it wasn't a hard decision because she deserves better she deserves 100% she's the most um, 
She's the most um, incredible human being I've ever met in my life. And she deserved to not be second. That was wrong. Um, and I almost built a bit of uh, bitterness towards the dream. Even though it's not an entity, it started to piss me off. Because I was like, you've given me nothing really, if you pretend it's an entity. Um, I'm here on my knees and life sucks. And I've been pursuing you like you were the holy grail of everything. And you're not, and it's not, mm. and not every dream is, um, and it's an, it is, an, it's an awakening, and is that from a naivety in life, and is I don't know, but um, it just wasn't happening. So I either had to do something to make it happen, which it was, which was got all the options were gone. I was doing everything to try and make it happen, um, and it wasn't happening. So then you need to develop acceptance that it's not happening. The dream that you want forever is not happening. It's not that it won't happen, but right now it's not happening. You need to deal with that. You need to build resilience. You need to build acceptance. And also, if you do want it to happen, you need to build patience. And they are the three life lessons I would give to anybody is 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 patience, acceptance, and resilience. Mm. Um, and they were the things that I wanted to work on and... I made a deal with myself that if I never made another movie again, you, I had to be okay with that. If I went to my grave, never going on a film set again, I had to be okay with that. And you and seem lighter. Me, you seem lighter for it. Yeah, thank you. I feel lighter. Yeah, you do. You got. You, it's different. I feel it's less different. intense, man. I was the right intense. Well, what do you think about people like Charles Bukowski then, who say sacrifice it all, sacrifice women, sacrifice food, sacrifice everything for your dream? Like, because there are people that say that, right? And yeah, some people believe it. And the conversation I had with Nigel, who was on before you, isn't it the most difficult thing to know when to quit on something. It is very difficult. Do you know what? For me, it wasn't. <clears throat> you'll know when to quit when that time presents itself. If you've got, you'll, you'll know. Um, and I knew, even though it's not quitting, you take your foot off the gas, you almost take a step out of the, um, you, you take a s to step out of that orbit a little bit that you've been in, just observe, um, and reevaluate. So, what if Olga's not there? Like, what do you do then? Do you go all in on the dream more, or do you still take yourself away from it? I, I, I like being away from it. It's better for me and my 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 mental so health. So, even if you're on your own, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't like if Olga passed away tomorrow. I wouldn't be like, right, I'm going to go and make a movie. I, I'd, I'd still live my life the same way, um, and I'd. I'm 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 happy with where my 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 mind is. Good man. And in terms of my relationship with chasing that dream, because my story's not over yet, not by a long no, shot. No, no, it's not. You know what I mean? And yeah. I know deep down it isn't. And if it comes again, I want it to be right. If it all comes around again, I want it to be right. And don't get me wrong, I have had, um, I've been approached to make things. I don't I don't want to make them because mm. they don't feel right. And I'm okay with that. I earn. A decent wage with the bread and butter camera work editing and 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 that side of my business more than I've ever earned with the movies. So it doesn't interest me to be a. I never wanted to be a journeyman director where I'm making a living from. This guy can make movies in two weeks, pay him a chunk of money, he'll come in and direct it, and then he can fuck off. It doesn't interest me. Um, I'd rather not make movies at all than make movies like that. And some people will just say that, but I needed to know that I wasn't lying to myself. Um, and it took me a year yeah. to kind of go through that. And I, But the deal, not only was the deal that you need to be okay that you never make a movie again, you need to make sure you're not lying to yourself. Yeah. Don't come out of this in six months and go, yeah, I don't care if I don't make another movie again. And then someone options my screenplay it falls through and I throw my toys out the pram because that's happened. And I didn't throw my toys out the pram because this screenplay got optioned. One of my babies, I went back to the drawing board when I got back from LA, wrote a plethora of screenplays in a range of genres. These are the movies I want to make. Well, I love that, mate. I think that's, I think if every guy had that in them, where, what you're saying is I know what I stand for and I'm not budging. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I love that. And I think when you don't have that, you're lost in life. When you don't know what, because you don't know, how do you know what to say yes or no to? 
Yeah. If you don't know what you stand for. So yeah. you're like, this is what I fucking stand for. No, 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 no. And I'll say yes to the thing that fits in with my values. I, I love that. How much of your, like this this newfound, we'll call it happiness. I don't know what you want to call it that. This, whatever it is, is down to also like changing the castle that you live in. Oh yeah, moved out. Because again, there's two things, mate. One, you always said, I want to make movies. And two, you've always said since I've known you, you want this house. That's let's face it, not in, in cover, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, fucking yeah, just say yeah, it. Yeah, not in this, Coventry. With this garden, this this house, yeah, that, yeah, I guess yeah. house that you're proud, which we call it, really proud of, comfortable yeah, in. Yeah, you've got it now. Yeah, I got it, and it, and yeah. and I always thought that it would not. I always thought that when I moved into a house that I was proud of, my kingdom, you know, um, I because I, I, me and Olga haven't owned a house together. I, I bought my flat, she moved into it, then we rented somewhere. Um, and so it looked like we were just nev never going to get on the property ladder together. Um, and I always thought that once I would get in to a place that we loved, it would be because of the movies and it would be because a big chunk of money came along and it wasn't. Um, we we worked on our respective jobs and careers together um, and just did it old school. No one left us any money. We slogged, we worked, we saved. I sold the flat and that had a little bit of equity in it um, that I'd bought years ago. That gave us a little deposit. Nice. And we bought this house that we could only just really afford with a little bit of room for some renovations because it needed an entire modernization. Lovely little semi-detached, free bed, perfect. Olga's eyes lit up when she saw it. And I went, shit, she loves this house. I know who's going to have to do all the work. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I am not a guy that is into DIY. In the house we were renting in for seven years, I didn't put up one shelf. I didn't fix anything. Um, because mainly it wasn't our home. Sure. But also, I just, I'm not that guy. So I thought. And then... I basically then started to plan how we would renovate this house from um, from the floor up. It needed everything. New bathroom, new kitchen, new floors, um, uh, new doors, everything. And I was just like, I know some people that can help me. I'll do everything I can, but I know my limits. And they're probably pretty slim because I'm not this guy. Um, and then we just got absolutely stuck into it. Um, and I said to myself, I'll do everything I can. I know how to strip a wall. Um, that's about it. But I'll do that. And then when I hit my limit and I can't do something, I'll get someone in to help me. And I ended up doing way more than anyone who knows me thought was actually possible. It's beautiful. House is beautiful. I love Thank it. Thank you, man. Yeah, we got the so log burner, wood beam, hearth. Yes. Uh, we knocked through a wall in the kitchen to make it a kitchen <clears throat> diner rather than two rooms. Knocked through a wall in the bathroom. Made opened up the bathroom um, carpets. Two days to go. Carpets were going in yeah. our bathroom. But you said you shot it like you would a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freudian slip there. You shot it. You shot it like you did a movie. Yeah. I renovate. I didn't shoot the house, did oh, I? Fuck yeah. <laughs> See. I wouldn't have even known. I did that to Olga the other day. I yeah. said something and I was I framed it in a film it's like, film language. It's like beer and monster, mate. I feel like shit after that beer and monster. <laughs> 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 oh, I've not been monster yet. Oh yeah. mate. Yeah, you renovate it, it. Renovated it like you would shoot a movie. Yeah. So I approached. Essentially, what I did was, I think there's a couple. Of, there's a lot that went on with it in my mind. Yeah. One of them is, right, so see if you remember these, we've got to go through them all. There's, there's, there's wanting to do something, there's the inexperience and naivety can sometimes be on your side. Uh -huh. See if we remember these. Let's do those two. So if you, wa if you want to do something, I think want is probably one of the most underrated words okay. ever. Yeah. If you want to do something, you will fucking do it. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm speaking for myself. Sure. Okay, that might not be for everyone. Uh -huh. There are things that get in people's way. Um, and let's not take the piss. Yeah, uh, well, Steve, I want to fly. Yeah, you, you know, I get fly. It, right. Yeah. You want to do something within reason. 
you'll do it. And I wanted to renovate that house in seven weeks. And I did. So I renovated the whole house in seven weeks, me and Olga. Yeah. I was doing 12 hour days. So because I work from home, um, and here's what frustrates me about people. Well, you're lucky, Steve, you work from home, so you command your own hours. Not lucky, didn't win the lottery to work from home. I've grafted like yeah. fuck so that I can do that and be able to have much more leisure time and time for doing things like renovating a house. So when people tell me I'm lucky, I want to pour cement down their throat like <laughs> that. Did him in that. Yeah. Um, because I'm not, I've, I've worked hard to, to get to that place. So then I was in a position where I could do 12 hour days where I was also working. I would get up at like 6 a.m. I'd do an edit till like nine. I'd drive over to the house from Coventry. Um, and then I would do a 12 hour day, whether it be pulling down a wall, ripping up a carpet, um, or, uh, or or stripping walls because that was the big one that we could do. Destroying shit, basically. Yeah, that's what I'm good at. Basically, that's that's. Do you remember what I texted you said if you need anything smashed down? Knocking down, yeah. I was about to knock down that garage. Yeah. Like, sure, I can't do it. I was like, mate, I can't do anything Busy. handy, but if you need yeah, to yeah, break yeah. anything, you would love knocking down that I garage. Know. Mate. It was crazy. Have you seen those anger rooms where you just go in with a hammer and hit? Yeah. Them? Oh, you had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. It might not have been the most. I had to. Yeah. It might not have worked actually because I needed to be a bit more calculated. I know. It looked a bit with more an skillful. angle grinder. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, like t- tools like drills and and all angle grinders. I've I've, b- I've built this kind of arsenal of. Yeah. tools now yeah. and Olga's like I never never would have thought you were that guy and I'm like neither did I yeah. so you will surprise yourself but if you want to do something if I I'll tell you what if I want to do something I will do it yeah I will do it and that that's it, it's, it I'm a simplest I'm a simple man of simple taste and I wanted to do that and I, and I did it mm. what's your next want project yeah hold that? hold that thought because you're the one that was going to say before because i will forget the other thing was naivety i oh, had sorry, no yeah, idea so i had no idea how long it takes to renovate a house completely inexperienced and i think that went in my favor mm. well since it worked right because i don't know how long something takes and it and again what i did was i approached it the same way i would approach a movie uh-huh. so Technically, I project managed those movies, really. Um, $2.5 million budget for two of them. Um, you're project managing, really. Mm. So I approached it the same way. I brought up the sheets, the Excel sheet that I use as a budget for my smaller movies that I make. And I changed that to like the headings of actor and crew to like contractors. And then I drew out a schedule, yeah. like a shooting schedule. Um, and basically applied myself like I was going to shoot a movie in seven weeks. And that's how I project managed that seven week renovation. What was week six, day seven like? Was that like putting the, were you done by then? Or was so it literally two, two No, point? two days before we were gonna move in on the 21st of April, on the 19th of April, they're putting in the carpet and the flooring and the bathroom. Nice. And do you know what? I never slept better. My mate was like, I bet you're up all night sleeping. I'm not, I'm doing 12 hour days. <sighs> And I know where I am, and I know what we're doing, and I, I've never, I've never been more. Um, I, I was just organised, and it, it, it worked, and I surprised myself. Um, but the other thing, again, like I say, is naivety. I had no idea how long it should take. Mm. All I knew was I don't want to be renting for two months while I'm paying a mortgage for two months. Yeah. So I'm going to give myself seven weeks because if we cross that threshold, we haven't got the budget. Again, movies, you ain't got the budget for that extra day of shooting yeah you've got to pay more rent you got, you're going to have to pay more rent and we ain't yeah. got that so we've got to get in there in seven weeks all of no one believes me that i did it no one believes me that i did it i believe you all well you no know, but i mean as in a lot i don't believe oh. it but they kind of do believe <laughs> yeah. me um but i think there are some people that are like he's yeah. he's just trying to be flashy yeah. i think you gotta be careful with experts because sometimes experts they have such a narrow minded way of doing things yeah. so someone might come into the house look around and go steve no, no, this will take longer than seven weeks. You want to give yourself 14. Which happened. Yeah, and your naivety might be the thing that's your strength yeah. then, isn't it? It's like, no, I'll fucking get it done in seven. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was that was my approach. But what's funny about it is it reminded me of a time when I was on the set of Vendetta and we got to day four and they all started applauding. He shot 300 slates or we've shot 300 slates. Whee! I was the only one not clapping. So, in fact, is that, is that good? 
Well, yeah, 300 slates by, or whatever it was. I can't remember. It might have been more, might have been whatever. Um, that's phenomenal. That's fast. And I was like, I didn't know that. I don't know. I've never been on a movie set yeah. before. I don't know how long it's supposed to take. I'm just going at my own pace. Are you pissed? Oh, you're pissed now. Can you cut? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think, uh, what I'll put, you said we were going to have an intermission. Yeah, what I'll do, I think I'll just let it roll. I need a piss too. I'm glad you said we'll it. We'll see. You're happy. I'll I tell you what, go for a piss and we'll solve, the, we'll solve it. But just leave it rolling. Yeah, I'll leave it rolling, we'll, but we'll I'll obviously back. have to edit it. I'll be back. Yeah, unless I... D- no, uh, yeah, we'll cut it. Go for a piss, go for a piss. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. Beautiful, it's trying to fucking spell up. We're back, man. Oh, we're back, man. Sorry, Nicole. Nicole will not like that because now she's got to edit it. She'll probably have to edit it anyway. No, it's usually it's just I hit record, it runs to the end, and then but sorry, Nicole. No, I may. There's nothing worse than having a conversation for the last few minutes. I've been like, I'm going to move the piss, I'm going to move the piss, I'm going to move the piss. Yeah, I know. That's what I should a new beer. I've been burping as well. See, I'm not going to go for that. I might go for that towards the end. <laughs> where do we get to sorry Nicole. I don't know where do we get to renovate any house and uh, I think we kind of wrap that up but yeah uh, and now but... I was asking you what your next big want is so that I, was I think I know one. okay I don't think you do do you know why I don't think you know because I don't know <laughs> okay I'm going to just throw it out there a dog yeah. a dog uh, so so you're wrong but I, I I understand why you've you've thrown that up there out there. So I don't know what my next sort of project is. Um, basically, you know, I, 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 do you know what? There's a there is there's a movie. There's a movie script that I've got. I could shoot it tomorrow. It's probably one of the best things I've written. Um, but I'm I'm a different person now in that. If this film came along like 10 years ago, I'd probably go and shoot it. Mm. Probably wouldn't be very good. But it would have something in it that was worth making. Um, I'm not as excited about doing something like Out of Mecca again. Out of Mecca nearly broke me. One man band filmmaker. Um, sort of um, enjoyed the idea of it. Hated the actual process. All of it. Mm. Um I, I just don't love filmmaking in the way that I did before. That just comes with maturity. Um, it's nothing to do with the people that I've met in the industry and the lip service and the false promises and the um, disappointments. It's nothing to do with that. I'm just not um, like a young, excited filmmaker anymore. I think there's more to life. Um, I think dream dream chasing in the way that I was is kind of a young man's game. Um, certainly in my own experience. Um, and there's a lot more out there um, to experience rather than being on a one track. Okay. Um, um, you kind of on the, you get on this one track trajectory with blinkers onto the world. What is that stuff then that you're talking about that, that's out there that's not in filmmaking? I think there's experiences to be had with people that you love. Yeah. There's, um, there's, there's just like, for example, a perfect day for me now, um, not so much in this weather, but certainly when the weather was really nice, is I'll get up in the morning, I'll do about an hour's, I'll make breakfast for me and Olga, Olga goes to work, I do about three or four hours edit, so I work till about early afternoon, and then I go out on my bike, and because I'm living out sort of near the country now, I go out for like, you know, 12, 13 miles, take my time, stop, Meditate, uh, say hello to the sheep. Mm. So I see we've got my uh, animal communication. Are they, are they fucking running up to you and jumping all over? No, you too? do you know what they don't? But there was a funny story about a lamb <coughs> years ago that made me stop eating lamb. Um, I remember sure this story. Into, yeah, 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 I mean, I could. It's basically tell it, a cute little lamb, wasn't it? it was it was basically, I was doing some work out in the Brecon Beacons. I was in the middle of nowhere doing some filming as usual with the Sterling Airsoft guys. Um, my favourite meat in the world used to be lamb. It's mine. Uh, I love mint sauce, mate. Lamb, dude. Oh. Like, so good. So good. <laughs> so good. Um, so long story short, I'm hiking it through pitch black lanes to go back to where I was going to be filming at night. And then there's a little, you know, <coughs> white shape by the field. Meh. And I'm like, and there's sheeps pacing me, like like following me down the field on the other side of the fence. And I'm like, dude, like, meh. And I'll go over to the fence then. I got to a gate. 
and it, like I went over to it and I was like, go and find your family. She go, I do that. I'm weird. I talk to her and I was like, she go and find your family, dude. Like, I can't help you. And I turn around from the fence to go and walk off. Meh. Calls after me. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what to do with this thing. Little lamb, little sheep. Put my bag down, my rucksack, my bergen. Climb over the fence. And the, the she kind of runs, totters away. But then comes back towards me. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. So I pick him up. And everything I was doing, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing this. But I pick him up and I carry him. And he his head is facing away from me. I feel his little belly breathing, feel his little heart beating. I'm just trotting across this pitch black field, mauled by wolves or something. I didn't know what was going on. What am I doing? And I go over the crest of this hill and I can see a little flock. Just because it was pitch black, bit of twilight, and um, a bit of moonlight, sorry. And so I can sort of make out these shapes. My eyes are ad adapted to the, to the darkness. And then, so... I thought, well, that's got to go with them. Like, I'm not your kind, dude. And I kind of put him down, got as close as I could without scaring them, but so that he wasn't on his own. But he was miles away from them. I put him down, and I literally went, right, off you go. Go on, go back to the, go back to your gang. And no word of a lie, he literally looked back at me and he went, oh, and then man. ran off. <laughs> and I never ate lamb again. I was like, oh, I can't. So hopefully. That will happen to me with like chickens. Chickens next. Yeah. And pigs. Yeah. Chickens are a bit more savage than lambs. Yeah. Lambs are cute. Yeah. They're ugly. Yeah. I, I so, think we're, as humans, we're conditioned not to want to eat cute animals. We are. Big time. We're like, I yeah. Get it, I get it. People wouldn't go, oh, that poor little crocodile that we're eating. Like, yeah, people yeah, are like, yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. they're ugly things. Let's yeah, eat them. Yeah. Even some fish aren't exactly. Yeah. Cool people don't sit there and go, oh, those cute little fish, man. I feel their little heart beating. Yeah. But when it's sheep, they just look cute. But. There's a lot to be said about how that affected me. And I've never, that was 10 years ago. I've never eaten lamb again. Yeah, and I don't, it wasn't, I didn't try not to. I just couldn't. It was like weird hypnotherapy. Like when people go to hypnotherapy for smoking, it was like, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Mm. But anyway, so that's my day. So I'll go and see these, like I'll, I'll, I'll go out my bike. Um, and I'll do, you know, an hour and maybe even two hours. I'll sit, I've got a little, there's a little place where I just sit and meditate put my feet up, lay back, look up at the clouds. Um, I, and then I go home, might get home about two, three o'clock. Mm. I might put my feet up and watch a movie. Yeah. Or I'll go back to work and maybe do another edit because I work, I do a lot of work for a YouTube channel and it's per video and I can smash out two or three videos a day. Um, so, I'm elated. Or I'll sit in the hot tub. When it was hot, I've got hot tub, I sit in the hot tub with the bubbles and just, Nice. Just enjoy, like retirement. It like feels almost like retirement, right? But it feels amazing. But I almost feel like, I'm, and I'm probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. I'm certainly in. The only thing missing from my life is Jax. Mm -hmm. Jax would make life perfect now. I do miss him very much, um, and we will go back to that talking about getting another dog. But that's in answer to your question of what else is out there. That, for me, is a million times better than being on a set for 12 hours, shouting at people who are dragging their feet, trying to get the shot in before the end of the day, before you get fined. Um, for little problems happening, the rain, the weather. For a film that you end up watching and going, it wasn't worth, it wasn't worth all that. It wasn't worth all that. Look at your bank account. It wasn't worth all that. Like I said, I earn more money now working part-time. So it was never about the money anyway, so it's okay. Mm. Um, but having said that, if my time comes around again and those movies do, you know, come to some form of fruition and I make the right connections, I will make movies again. I'm not, I'm not, not making them out of bitterness. I'm got myself to a place where I'm happy not making them. And if I'm happy making them again, then I'll make them. If I not, if it doesn't look like this is an appetizing project, I won't do it. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm really indifferent now. And I can say that 100% honestly. Um, and I'm 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 happy with, I'm 100% I'm happy with where I am. Well, I think that's a good drill to do. It's something we used to do, the perfect day drill. It's like, yeah, how do you want your day to look? And then like, how can you start to make that day? 
happen. It's often a lot more simple than what we first imagine. Yeah. Like you say, just getting up and making breakfast for your lady. It's like, that's fucking quite nice. Having a Good coffee down star, whatever it is. I go out and de ice a car, like we had that mad, mad frost. <coughs> yeah. I go out and de ice a car. I feel good doing things yeah, yeah, sure. for her to make her life easier and, and, and make her happier. Um, but that's, I, I don't know, is that is that growth? Is that maturity? Is that just becoming an older man? Um, uh, or is that is that you really working on yourself to make sure that you're in a, in a place where your mental health is in a healthy place? Mm. And I... No, like things don't get to me like they used to now like I'm not on social media um, I don't watch the news don't watch any news I don't really know what the fuck's going on in the world mm. um, I'm kind of just going with the flow what will be will be something goes wrong I'll deal with it but until that does happen um, I'm, I'm just spend my days just being up here and going with the flow sounds good it sounds like you've disconnected yourself from the mainstream which is what i've worked really hard to do too sure do you I know know you mean? Have, yeah. yeah well i haven't watched the news for years either social media i'm still on but i never scroll through people's stuff you sure yeah never do it so i haven't seen news feed for a couple of years now on facebook not interested yeah yeah it's uh someone described it perfectly the other day um what was it um, 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 a soul destroying meaningless uh, vacuum of false affirmation. Mm. Oh, that's so chummy. Is that, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. Well, well it's weird, mate, because what you've described is kind of like, it's got all the essence of what I'd like in my life too. I think it's it's really cool. But I think the relationships are at the core of everything. Hugely, hugely. And and yeah. and, and obviously your relationship with yourself and, and There's that, that's a big I think, thing on that. I think, yeah, I get that. But I think the people that are in your life, like the guy, I had the guy in there before you owns this building, and he was he was amazing. He was so honest. He's like, I'd give all this up, to spend more time if I could go back. He said, Wow, yeah. You know, he's got this brilliant business. He goes, I regret not spending more time with my kids. Wow. You know, he's like, this what, and every every person experienced but touch the same thing. You know, when we go, wow. oh, we don't know what's important in life. You do go and ask the ninety year olds that are about to fucking die. Yeah, they'll tell you. They all say the same thing. More time, almost, uh, more time to yourself, more time for leisure. Yeah, and uh, spend time with people that you truly love. Yeah, you know? exactly. Now, I didn't I didn't have that as an agenda. I never aimed to do that. I kind of, I, I've always said, I know what I don't want to be or I know what I don't want to do. I've always gone through it through a process of elimination and chipped away until I've got to well, that works. what I do want. Yeah, yeah. Even when sometimes I don't, if I don't know what I want. And I didn't really know I wanted to spend my days at the moment. And it might change. Sure, yeah. The yeah. movies might come around again and I'm oh, yeah. flat out and I'm, you know, uh, yep. going at a million miles an hour again. And I'm, you know, uh, it, it could come around again. And if it doesn't, and like I said, if it's right, I'm happy to go with it. But at the moment, I'm, I'm completely happy with where I am and being present and not thinking about the past or the future and just trying to be in the present and enjoying each day as it as it comes along. But I never had... An agenda to do that mm. i think i always wanted to make movies and i thought that would make me happy then when it stopped making me happy i went what's going to make me happy i don't know but i know that the movies aren't all of this dream chasing business is not making me happy anymore so i've got to find a way to um reevaluate almost go back to the drawing board and understand what's important and what makes me happy knowing that that doesn't and it kind of happened by accident i moved out of coventry renovated the house live sort of out around nature and i go for walks and and runs and i've always kind of been like that anyway yeah um but it's it's really come to the fore a lot more now but th this is that theory that giving things up is the thing that makes you happy do you know what i mean rather than trying to collect more stuff and do more things they yeah. say that let go of the things that no longer serve you and you'll as you've rightly just said then, you, it'll bring you to what's important. Interesting. Do you know what I mean? So you let yeah. go of X, you let go of Y and Z, and then what you're left with is what's important to you. This is what's interesting is that I don't I don't read the the books mm. that you read. Mm. And and what I love about it is that, and it's the same with script writing. I've never read a book on how to write a script. Probably because that's probably why I'm not very good at it. 
I can't get I'm any films, mate. I don't believe you. <laughs> um, but I've never read a book on how to write a screenplay. And I worked with this guy recently who had read all the books. And I told him about my process. And he was like, oh my God, that's like such and such and such and such. And he does that and he does that. And these were phenomenal filmmakers. Mm. I don't want to mention the, the filmmakers because it will make it will just cheapen what I'm saying and make it sound really corny. But really phenomenal filmmakers. And, I, and he was like, that's what they do. He said, did you know that? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, I just, I know how, I know how I write. And if I try and do it any differently, it, it's not going to work. I can't force it. And I can't turn it into a mechanical process of this has to happen by this, this has to happen by then. Um, that takes all of the fun out of mm. the process for me. Um, and if I'm not having fun, I don't want to do it. Um, it doesn't matter how much you pay me. So um, he, that, he was like, that's, you know, and it's like you say, you read the books, you read the literature on mindset more than anyone I, I know. I think it's phenomenal how much, how dedicated you are to the stuff that you read. And when I was on social media, I'd see the stuff you would put on, like the literature you read in. Mm. I was like, Fuck. but you'll then tell me that I'm kind of a, doing it. The It's nice to hear that I'm kind of doing it by accident. And that's kind of the what a lot of people are aiming for. But I'm not, what am I trying to say? I'm not trying to do it to be like that. I'm just doing what yeah. it, what, what my instincts are telling me yeah. to, to do. But other than like The Power of Now and a few of the books, I don't, I've not read any, the plethora that you've read. No, but it's all a lot simpler than you think, mate. It's um, like you say, it's kind of like what we already know. These books aren't really telling you too much that you don't know like if you just stop like you say and slow down you kind of know yeah it's just whether you ever get to that point where you stop and assess and then whether you can manifest that so like we say if we know that health how you feel inside your own body relationships are the most important thing why is everyone not just working on those things before they do other shit that's not that important uh, yeah and I think also <clears throat> I think it's depends on the person Someone might have just heard what my perfect day is and gone. That sounds doesn't sound like a good day to me. I'd rather be at work making money, mm. yeah, and or, or or you know or, or whatever their day is. Sure. Yeah, they yeah. might hear my day and go, "Man, Steve's given up. Like he's knocked it on the head. He's given up. He's retired. What pussy." Um, so it, I think it all depends on who you are. Because five, ten years ago, that wouldn't have sounded like a perfect day to me. That would have sounded like future Steve's given up. And he's knocked it all on the head. And how depressing is that? That he surrendered to failure. Um, but I know I haven't. You know, it's it's like I said, it's a, a process of taking your foot off the gas, reevaluating. Mm. And when I go forward again, or if I go forward again, it'll be it'll be right and it'll be proper. And I've, I've heard a few of the lads that I'm with at the minute, coaching at the minute, who are in a similar boat to you, you know, and they've just said, I don't feel like I've got anything to prove to anyone anymore. It's refreshing. No. no. Do you know what I mean? So I don't make decisions based on what those, those people might think now. That was huge for me. I was yeah. always, a, I was huge on wanting to prove myself, mainly to myself a little bit as well. Yeah. But if you think, if I'm back in the day, I remember being introduced to you by, I think Jeff was there, the first time I heard your name, it was at his masterclass. And he went, trust me, Steve will be a Hollywood director. And it's, although of course, it's all with great intentions, it's almost like you get that identity from a very, very, very young age. And it's like, oh. oh I've got to live up to that now, maybe. Kind of. Yeah. It's just like you set that seed from 20 and this is what I'm going to be with my life. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You can attach to that and go, yeah, that's my life. I'm going to be this. Yeah. And nothing else will do. And it's like, well, the universe might not have that plan for you. No. And it felt like that at one point. Yeah. It really felt like, like everyone the, knew you was Hollywood yeah, Steve, right? Yeah. This guy's going to go to Hollywood. Yeah, trust yeah, me. Yeah. It's and I sort home. of did. I had a look. You know, yeah. it, again, it's relative. Well, you did go Hollywood. He, well, yeah. So you could, we, could, we could argue yeah, that yeah. actually he's fucking right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, technically, yeah. I mean, and some people, it's all relative. I, you know, I see. Hollywood, Hollywood's not, you know, really a thing, you know, it's making movies out of LA, is that what Hollywood yeah. is, or what is it, what not, what even yeah. is it, yeah. you know, it's going to LA and making movies, sure. which technically I did, but for me, it, it's like, it's it's the scale of the movie, you know, I, did, I didn't make no Die Hard or Lethal Weapon, yeah. you know what I mean, and for me, that's Hollywood, 
you know, that's what you went and did. I didn't do that. But to other people, they'll go, Steve's made movies in Hollywood. Technically, it was Canada. <laughs> I was shooting in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. But I got the gig in LA and that's where the company was mm. based. WWE Studios is Hollywood, inverted commas. But yeah, again, it's, it's relative to you and what you perceive to be success and what is the finality in success what even is it and what would it have been for me and what is it for me um in career wise there's one script i've got if i make that movie that's it yeah that's it um because it's so hollywood it's such a hollywood movie it's an homage to tony scott shane black michael bay nice. all of the flavors i i i grew up with um and if i made that movie that would be it i know that but I could make another movie that's similar. People would go, Hollywood Steve strikes mm. again. No, I ain't. Yeah, I think if you want to be successful, the first thing you've got to do is define what that word means. Because yeah. I always think, dude, honestly, mate, I'm not just saying this. If you gave me a billion pound, but I was five stone overweight, I'd be like, that's a failure. Seriously. I'm that much into my value of got to take care of yourself. But you'd invest the money on trying to get Yeah, but healthy. what I mean, if, if I woke up tomorrow in a big mansion with yeah, loads yeah, of yeah. cars and I looked in the mirror... Yeah. I was a fucking slob, five stone overweight. I'd be like, Alex, what have you done? Yeah. Yeah, honestly. I think there's fewer people. I think when I was growing up, you were a success if you led that life. That is... that is The rich life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's success. And still, you got, today, you got, you got three cars in your drive. You've got a basketball sure. and a tennis court out, outside the back. It's a detached house with blah, blah, blah. Winning at life, that bro, that bloke, Yeah miserable single cries himself to sleep every night probably could be he ain't happy or maybe he is maybe he ecstatic is, yeah. with what he's got yeah but i think that was a generalization of what happiness is as time's gone on and the nearly i'd say overpopulation of the planet too many humans too much noise the influx of social media the influx of information just in general that is not what people want now. People want to slow the fuck down and do nothing. Do you think? I think so. I think they're... Well, that's the new generalisation, I think. I think that's a new generalisation. Do you think people are doing that or do you think that's what I people don't think secretly they can. want? Right, yeah. So it's kind of like they want... Yeah, that's what they want. Not, yeah, no, yeah. they're not doing that. Sorry, I, yeah. I, see I don't success. think they are doing... They want... That's the yeah. new generalisation of what success is if you're doing that. But I don't think enough people are... But that's now what they want. And I think if you did a poll and you went, give them two options. What is your version of success? Guy with five billion pounds in a mansion with three cars and a basketball court in his garden or bloke with a reasonable house. But he's got loads of time in the day to do what he wants, see the people he wants, read the books he wants and enjoy his time with the people he loves. It'd be interesting to see what would come back. And I think... In the 80s, would have been the prior. And I think now, it would be yeah. the latter. I think it's such a competitive game now that most people spend, they, they try and perceive success on a, on a platform. So I think so much effort's going into the right pictures, putting out the right message for social. I really do. I think people aren't living that life. I think at a basic level, I think if you could ask someone like, okay, I'm going to give you a partner that truly loves you for who you are. I'm going to give you a roof over your head. And I'm going to allow you to dictate what you do with your days. I think most people would snatch your hands off for that. And that's 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 my life. Man. Well, that's your perfect. Yeah. So people, you say people might listen to that and go, "Fucking, that's a bit boring." <laughs> I, I guarantee there'll be some people envious as fuck. And envious. and you know what? We we're starting to realise that. And and me and Olga will make a point every day to just look at the house, and we both go, "I can't believe we're here. Mm. I can't believe I put my log burner on." Especially when it was cold. Yeah. So I've been dying to utilise it in a way that it's not, I'm sweating. Yeah. I was putting it on in the summer just because yeah. it was there and I was like, I really want to use it, man. Yeah. Um, open the doors and I'm sweating. But we had that cold snap. I was like, oh, man, I might yeah. just sit there. But dude, I'll sit there and just look at the fire. Yeah. I wake up in the morning, make my coffee, get up about an hour before Olga. I put the fire on and I, I don't do anything. I don't look at my phone. I look at the fire. Yeah. And I don't even, I don't think... I, I, I don't think about anything. And I suppose that's a form of meditation. 
because I think meditation is relative as well. I think there's a certain... How do you stay there? So I, I go for episodes of that and it feels great when I do it. But then I, I wake up one day and I'm back in the rat race. Well, I'm not doing enough. I need to be, do- yeah, yeah, like, I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. What, yeah. what, what, what? I'm like, guilt, I'm, guilt. I should almost, be doing more. I was there. I'm right back I was in there. And it's this constant fight between that and the yeah, rat yeah, race, yeah. that and the rat yeah, race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not, I'm not doing a rat race because I feel like, I should, it's like a genuine inside me. I don't know whether I want to be in the rat race or I want what you've just described. Or whether I want both. I like both. Yeah, okay. I like some days of calm. I like some days of chaos. I like some days of cities. I like some days of countryside. Great, so, great. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, such a and, I, and I love visiting. I love visiting cities now. I love visiting. Like went through the Birmingham market recently. Um, chaos. Yeah, it's mental. So many unsavoury characters as well. Couldn't yeah. wait to get home. Living uh, in the countryside changes you, bro. And honestly, it, it, it's it just it's changed. Like two minutes walk um, from my house. There's a big pasture, massive vista. And it just opens up and the sun rises when you just come out of the village. Nice. And it's a it's it's probably about a it's a one minute walk. Um and, and you come out and then you're on a little B road and then I walk around this field and the yeah. sun rises on my left and I just look at the sun as I'm walking around this field. Nice. Um, and that's my that's you know a lot of mornings I'll do that that's another reason I loved having Benson because he kind of fought because he was slow as shit man like so he's <laughs> pulling along like this he kind of forced me to slow down yeah, I had okay. a rule that when I was with him like I wouldn't be texting the news yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk. so he kind of time with he, him yeah he'd sit and he, he, he'd have this nature of just sitting he'd look round he'd look ra- I know what a legend he kind of made me do the same Good. but now it's like no, 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 let's not do a slow walk. Let's get there as quick as we fucking can. Yeah, yeah, I've got stuff to do. Yeah, I've got yeah, stuff yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that. Yeah. I was there, I was there, mm. man. But I think you just, I, I honestly think it's just to do with the maturity. I do think it's just, for me personally, I might be wrong. I, you know, I might be, I might actually be taking a lot away from myself by saying that. But I think some of it is to do with me kind of accidentally working on myself but i think some of it is to do yeah. with just a natural maturity um but, it sounds but like i've always been like i've always liked my walks i've always liked my time yeah. outside i've always liked that anyway it sounds like you're having your needs met now like all i think of them. so yeah yeah like, do you know what i mean yeah i'm like, not from I'm financial not. to the house that you live in to the relationship that you're in to the exercise it like, sounds like they're all being ticked all those boxes oh hugely and and i, I i'm not in that place now where i feel like there's a void um that needs filling and there was that um certainly and i've also proven to myself that i can do it like you know i i I, i've been in the company of like i was in tom hardy's living room sat there working on something at one point yeah you you didn't make a big deal of that did you no because i saw a picture because it wasn't really again see i don't it's not a bit it wasn't it wasn't, we just went in and did this voiceover, long story short, for another project that didn't come to fruition. And I wrote this voiceover with his dad, who had also co-wrote and, uh, co-written Taboo. We sat in his living room and he was reading my words. And I was well, sat like this, basically, me and Tom Hardy for an afternoon and talked about all sorts of stuff, you know, like from dogs to airwolf. Yeah, he loves uh, fucking dogs, doesn't he? He loves his dogs, yeah. yeah. And, um, and um, yeah, and but then it was, it, to be fair, it wasn't really through me, it was through someone else. Mm-hmm. And it was his connection. Right. And I didn't want to encroach on that. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was going to be more of a long-term thing with this project we were working on, that there might be a time where there was a project that I could pitch him. And that's the project that I told you about. Whereas if I if I make that movie, that's it. It was written for Tom Hardy right. before I was in Tom Hardy's living room. But I didn't pitch it to him. One, I'm in his house. I bet people do that all the time. The last thing I would want, if I was Tom Hardy, some filmmaker coming in to do a voiceover yeah. and then put me in a corner, pitch a movie at me. I get it. So I didn't, out of respect, yeah, not it. only for him, but for the guy that I was with as well. Sure. So I kind of beat myself up for not doing it, but I still stand by it being the best decision, even though we didn't end up working together again and that door is now closed. Would you ever do it now and send it and go, like, you know, we, we I have, out? I have, yeah. Oh, they right, just so, ignore me. Yeah. Who's this guy? <laughs> He's just I hate Tom Hardy. He's got it going for him, man. He's, he's bang on. He's a legit BJJ him. player now as well. Of course he is. Yeah, turned up at that is. show a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. Did just he turned up and wins it. Oh, you bastard. Well, yeah, it's a couple of South who's ever on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck and gets gold. Yeah. yeah, bang on. Yeah. He was just having a sauna fitted in his house and everything because um, I know the guys who run the um, like it's, it's cold plunges and saunas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, having that he's into a bit of his uh, Wim Hof. 
Yeah, I love all that at the minute. Good, good, Cold good. showers, hot yeah. saunas. I've got my hot tub out there. I should yeah. jump in it. Oof. Well, you've got your pond, haven't you? You should turn that into a fucking well. plunge pool. No, no, no. All the fish are in there, man. All my mates are in there. It's like 14 fish that we saved. Get out the hot tub straight into I've the... got the hot tub, but I'll have the hot tub cold. That'll just be my cold plunge. Just oh, don't turn can... it on. Right, got it. It's yeah. just sitting there. It's probably in a block of ice at can the minute. Can you have it cold and then hit a button and it just goes hot? Or does it no, it'll probably take about a day to go oh, up to, to a to decent to warm, temperature. Yeah. yeah, so I have to leave it on in the winter if I want to do that. But I have done that. Dude, that's the other thing I do. I'll sit out at night looking up at the stars. Yeah, the stars in are great the October. In the countryside. Yeah, because I'm in the, in the village, and so yeah. the um, light pollution is minimal. Yeah. yeah. So you don't get all of that sodium vapor. So I'm sat in my little October with me little solar lights on. Just look up at the stars, put the bubbles on, turn them off. Sweet, sounds good. Best Saturday, Saturday night I did that. One yeah. Saturday night I did that. I'm Best. mad at myself. I don't make the most. Of it. I live in this beautiful village too. I just don't make the most of it. Do it, dude. I know. You gotta just I don't know, embrace it. As soon as I moved out of Coventry and I got into this village, I was like, Right, bike ride, where's the nearest woods? What's the route? I went exploring. Dude, I went exploring on my bike. One day I got on my bike, I didn't know where the fuck I was going. Didn't look at my sat nav, did nothing, and I just got a general sense of direction. And I went off and just did like this bike ride. Come back and I went to Olga. That was the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. I read a book that said every guy at some point, especially like the modern man who's been brought up with like mobile phones in his hand, should just get dumped somewhere and have to just find his way back home. Boom. <laughs> Best thing that or you Or get somewhere ever. without a sat nav, for example. Go. So I'm terrible. Like if I don't have a sat nav and you say go to this destination, I'm, I'd be terrible. Like, cause you yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you get used to it as well. It's like calculators. Yeah. Everyone's shit at maths now because yeah. you just use Everything's it. Someone asked me to add up 12 and 7, I'd be like, give me a minute. Mm. I was with someone the other week and um, I was out with dinner with them and they were on their phone texting their daughter or whatever. And they said she's just ordered like a Costa tea on Uber Eats. They even like, mate, you can get a cup of tea now delivered to your front room. Fuck that. I know. A the cost. Like a the cost. Three minutes down the road it was. Come on, man. Get a tea bag out. Boil your kettle. What are you doing? Well, I reckon you you could definitely survive without ever stepping outside your house now and find a woman. A million percent. million you percent. You've got dating apps. You've got Uber Eats. Or you've got porn. You can just smash one out. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Which is what most blokes probably do. Yeah. Like, fucking at home all day. Which, you know, I could easily do. Anyone porn, could easily do. Porn's, porn's the best thing I gave up, man. I told you about it. It's fucking nasty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't go into some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah. just it's, very, it's the, just normal. It's yeah. just a normal journey for a lad where, he, like I say, he discovers like the, like you told me, the yeah. fucking catalogues and then page free. Oh yeah, case catalogue and then channel five. Section. Yeah. Then uh, then cable. Do you remember the good old fashioned ten minute preview? No, I never had satellite, but that was oh, like a satellite was, TVX yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like in between like a Channel Five movie and hardcore porn. And then okay. you get the internet, and then it's like, right, it's wow, all over. It's the gloves free, are off. Free, yeah, it's yeah a free you got free fork. access. You no longer have to go into the news agent and go. Mm. I know, and pick shit off the, the rack. But I had a, a like a sex therapist on a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, no. I need to watch that She one. made me blush so bad, man. Really? Yeah. Tell, tell what, what? Well, first, like, she used language like, she Did said she, pussy, uh, and I didn't expect, I thought she was going to say, like, vagina and words like that. Okay. Uh, but then she was saying shit like, women don't orgasm until at least 45 minutes into sex. I'm like, that can't be fucking true. She no, basically thinks no most, <laughs> most women fake. Okay. Orgasms, yeah, because most men basically watch porn, think that that's how it goes, <laughs> yeah. and then women watch porn too, and they learn how to fake it. And, make it. and I was like, "Fucking, this is a head fuck." She's into tantra and all that. Some of the stuff she said was—I mean, she was a lovely lady, she's a Finnish lady. Um, she was actually deputy leader of the Finnish Green Party. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But did you not know? Were you like, "Where is this going? How do I respond?" Well, I kind of played along with it a bit too much. I think if I'd have gone back, I would have challenged her a bit more. Oh, okay. But I was probably embarrassed in case, like, she's she's telling the but truth. Again, I'm like, but again, it's hell. subjective. Surely there's girls who will climax quicker than 45 I f- minutes. I fucking hope so, mate. Otherwise, every bird <laughs> I've ever been with faked on me. Do you know what I mean? 45 fucking minutes. <laughs> but that's Never a big generalisation. But that's like saying it takes men eight minutes to come. But she, yeah, she reckons the average guy comes in two minutes. <laughs> I didn't laugh, but I was like, uh, <laughs> that's what she said. In sex? Yeah, so she says, two minutes for a man, 45 minutes for a girl. She said, you can see where the problems are. I was like, yeah, because he could come like, what, 24 times? Well, well you know what I'm saying, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah he couldn't, but yeah, yeah, yeah. in that time. So I was like, fucking hell, yeah. 
but she was t- she was she to be fair she she mentioned a couple of drills <laughs> that <laughs> really? I was like that actually sounded pretty cool. She mentioned this one where like if you you know if you're really into your missus and you want to make sweet sweet love to her right, you put your hand on her chest, she puts it onto you for two minutes. You just stare into each other's eyes. Your hand on her chest, hers on yours, uh-huh. and then as you breathe in, she breathes out, and as you breathe out, she breathes in. Uh, deep, I got to admit, deep, yeah. Deep. I was like, actually, that sounds pretty sweet. With Men don't think about that kind of shit for sex, do they? <laughs> do you ever see that on any pornos? Bish, bish, bosh, see Mate, exactly. Yeah. I know it sounds terrible, but that is it. It's four players like kiss on the lips, kiss the neck, kiss the boobs. You're off. Boom, There's let's two go. Two minutes, two minutes later. There's four. <laughs> two minutes later, I'll see you later. I'm going home. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But it's true, isn't it? It's true. Yeah. I bet two, you wish you never asked now. To an extent, again, I, I, yeah. I have to be careful because, yeah. Because Olga will listen. Yeah, to Olga this. will go. Don't you dare tell. Don't you yeah. dare. Uh, oh, d- yeah, t- tell yeah. them all of your of your <laughs> your tricks. Yeah, it should, yeah. Should be, but yeah. I, I, from personal experience, probably don't agree with a lot of what <laughs> that one. What's just yeah. been said? Again, relative to I suppose you and your partner. But tantra's all about like she's like has half day diaries. Like where she's. Going for it, man. Oh, it just terrified me. Love it. Animal. Mate, what are you... Uh, last question, though, because we've been shooting for a while. Okay. I feel like shit after that. Really? Don't you? should have G'd you up a bit. What we got? Like 20 minutes? Well, whatever. We can go whatever. I suppose you want to talk about... I didn't give you an answer to the dog thing. Or whatever Let, the Let's go was. there and tell me what dog you would but get. But just remember what you were about to ask me, I suppose. Otherwise, you'll forget. What was it? No, but I did want to tell you about this... St- st- <laughs> Excuse me. I did want to tell you about this thing they did with this dog, right? And uh, they were saying that this dog, and a lot of dogs do this, they know when their owner is going to come home and sit at the door. Oh, of course, yeah, And someone yeah. was like, well, yeah, well, of course they do. You come home at the same time every day. So we're like, I'll tell you what, we'll mix it up. You know, I'll come home at lunchtime this day, then four o'clock, then six. And this dog still knew every time, like five minutes, ten minutes before the owner was coming home. So it's not like you could hear the car. He's like, he was there, boom. So he was playing, like, it weren't like just going back and forward, it was just coincidence. But this dog was like chilling, doing his own thing all day. Five minutes before the owner comes in, boom, sits there like that. Okay. Waiting. I was like, they reckon they've got some psychic powers. Well, um, when I, when my plane landed from Vancouver, I think a couple of times, um, Olga obviously would know what time the plane was landing, roughly, depending on tailwinds, etc. Um, and delays she said he started pacing both both times my about the time my plane was landing and i'd been gone for three months sure she didn't say something like oh daddy's daddy's home daddy's coming home well no no she said he would randomly get up and start walking about it's not it's not really that's not really what olga would do it's not right. the sort of thing olga right, would do got it, got it. and also she would tell me if she did that you know what I mean? Olga's, yeah. Olga's, Olga's, Olga, you, you and know. Jack's always had a, like, a weird, strange, superhuman connection, though, didn't you? Yeah, we had a lovely bond. When I, to, towards the end, I was taking him to physiotherapy, and the physiotherapist said, "I can immediately feel the bond yeah. between you." Um, and there isn't a day goes by that I don't think about him. Uh, I, 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 that I'm grateful for the time that I spent with him. I just wish he was still here. Um, because he's my best friend and I've never known a relationship like it. The unsaid relationship between animal and, and, and man, there's a lot lot to be said about that or, 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 or not a lot to be said. There, I, I really tried to word what me and Jax had when he passed away and I wanted to write something really profound, really respectful for him and I couldn't do it. Because I couldn't put it into words mm. what he meant to me. It almost felt like words were cheap. Yeah. For 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 what that bond meant uh, to me, and it was um, it was it was it was yeah, it was beautiful. I, I miss him really, really badly. I know. I always found it super impressive that Benson loved me even when I was at my worst, even when I was at my best, or even when I was at my, he loved me the same. Yeah. I was like, this dog's legit. Yeah. Like, he didn't give a fuck. No, and, just, and, just and, it's, and it's um, and it's reciprocal as well, because I would I would be the same, or Jax would be the yeah. same with me. So I was like, if he's gonna 
be like that with me. I'm going to be like that with him. Um, and obviously, in the early days of disciplining and training, you know, you're a bit tough. And I still feel bad about times I've maybe, you know, told him off or disciplined him. But I'm glad that I did that because partly that is why he was such an amazing yeah, I get character. You on that one. I he had a beautiful temperament yeah i look back and i always think it's funny you say that i'm like i don't think i was enough fun with him i was too strict strict yeah i used to tell him off too much if he'd play i'd sometimes be like St stop doing that yeah 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 you know or i'm trying to work yeah yeah he's just wanted to play or if he's squeaking his toy i'd be like benson shut the fuck up take his toy off yeah and, like, and he's doing what's natural to him and he doesn't dog. realize he's pissing you off of course he don't you don't you don't go so alex is working i'm gonna go and get my toy and piss exactly. him off exactly he's just, he's just doing yeah. instinctively yeah or and you he, might yeah. want a bit of love and play yeah, yeah and he might be like he was fine with me this morning yeah and your mood has changed but he's like i just want to play <sighs> horrible. and you've got to almost we're fucking horrible humans man. i've been yeah 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 do you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. taking your shit out on a dog yeah yeah i think there's a lot to be said about that and and you know animal cruelty and 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 you know the 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 mistreatment of pets and yeah it's uh oh, don't get me wrong mate you had a fucking great life it's it's more yeah. the emo you know what i mean obviously it's, not it's, not us yeah, doing not that. Be, i'm talking yeah, about other yeah, people yeah, i'm not talking <laughs> about you I didn't beat yeah, it, yeah there's really. a lot to be said about you mistreating yeah. your dog no you i'm know, talking when, about other people yeah but you know when you just look back and go i wish we'd have had a bit more fun I wish I'd have been a bit more fun because yeah. he, he, he'd, of course, go along with the fun. So, yeah, so, see, I happily, certainly when Jack's got about halfway through his life, I knew that his time was precious, that their time with us is less than most humans. Sure. Um, if the human is lucky. Um, so, if I told you, you had four years to live that's pretty fucking depressing and you know you do so his lifespan i know he's probably only got about four or five years left yeah of course so if you're my best mate i want to spend as much of that time with you making great memories because i ain't got 20 years to do that i've only got four to do that with you same with jacks i knew that his lifespan because he's a dog he doesn't have the longevity that that humans have so that time is compressed into a smaller um, time frame. So hopefully me and Olga have got 20, 30, fingers crossed, you know, 40 sure. years together. So when you know there is a short amount of time with your best friend, who is a dog, I don't care what anyone says. Um, if anyone says it was just a dog, they're getting cement poured down their throat yeah, like Danny revenge. and Renda. It's becoming a common theme. Um, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, okay, it's, yeah. he, he was my best friend. So every day, I would always say it, I would love him like it was his last day. Yeah. So we would go and do stuff like pretend it's his last day. So if he wanted to go and have three walks instead of two, I'd do it. I was one, one time I gave him a whole chicken, cooked chicken. <sighs> And he nailed it because he was a 60 yeah, kilo Alaskan Malamute crossed yeah, with better him. Better man than me. I'd never give Benson Martin a chicken, man. Oh, he na and he nailed it. And he nailed it. I didn't give him, obviously, I, I didn't give him the whole chicken. I um, sort of cut it, you know, Shared cooked chicken. it yeah. and got the, rid of the little bones. But he still could nail them because he's the closest DNA to a wolf and wolf can go through all of the little... Yeah, the yeah, little, yeah. The, yeah. The little bones. Even cooked? Yeah. Wow. Benson used to, instead of a birthday cake, he used to get him a ribeye steak and put a candle in it for his birthday. Amazing. And but see, but you, I remember. See, I remember those times with Jack's yeah. fillet steak. I cooked him once. Yeah, no raw because yeah. he's a wolf. What used to piss me off? I was like, he was still as grateful as he was if I gave him a biscuit. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know what I was yeah, expecting yeah, yeah, from yeah. it. But I was like, Benson, you know that's fillet steak, right? Yeah, you know time. that's not cheap. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he yeah. gives a fuck. I spent eight quid on that. Hello, that's yeah. Cracking, yeah, hello, yeah. What have you been in the mood for me? Do you not know? I just bought that fucking fillet steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I can't eat it because I put it on the floor for you. Yeah, otherwise I'd have it. I know it's crazy, isn't it? But yeah, mate, it's they're beautiful. I'd get an English Mastiff next, I think. Um, I So in answer to your question about what dog I'd get, or because that was right at the beginning. It was a I know, you dodged it well. Big circling back. Um, Jack's broke my heart. He broke my heart. Um, and to get into that again with another animal, because I will be so devoted to it again, because that's what happens with me and animals. Um I've fallen in love with them and I'm devoted to them. 
Um, and the bond will be the same. I know it will. I'm not ready to go through that again, even if it might be in another 10, 12 years, because mm. it was hard and it broke my heart. And one day I will, but at the moment, it's just a no. Having said that, what I did say to Olga was, when the time's right, it's right. And I think a dog will find us, oddly. Yeah? Yeah. Or what you mean, just rock up on the door? No, I just think there'll be an encounter, something will happen. It nearly happened recently where someone sent me a picture of a husky that they, yeah. they'd, they'd, someone had recovered them. Rescue, yeah. Um, from somewhere and it was going to go into a home and blah, blah, blah. And they renovated a house or they bought a place and it was, got these animals in there. And I was like... Yeah, people tag me and all that stuff too. You ought to get yourself down to the dog's trust. No, man. because I'd take them all I home. Would. <laughs> I'd ta I would take them all home. I've got the room now and there'd be five dogs. Oh, and I would take... That's why that's I can't... Go. I've given a load of... Um, I've done like a food bank for the dog's trust. Yeah. So I've given a load of food, load of stuff, spent a load of money on that this Christmas. And I should... I, I, I'd be a great person to go in I'm there. Sure. And, but no, I'd be, like, they're coming home. I can't... I'm too... I'm too fragile and emotional when it comes to animals in distress and I just want to save them all and I can't control that and I probably should do something about that because mm. I don't think it's healthy. I just want to save every, you know... Every, yeah, I get it, man. Turn the hooch, cry my eyes out that film. Big time. Marley and Me. Hatchie. Marley is good. Hatchie, Richard Gere. <laughs> Fuck it. Just wrong. the worst. Just oh, horror, mo horror movies. I can't yeah, no, destroy no. me. I oh, know, mate. I oh, know. Even Beethoven was a hard watch. There you go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The, they all you know, when that guy gets in the cage. Yeah, fucking, I see it. Yeah, I, I am legend. Yeah, tough, tough watches, dude. Mate, last question. Okay. This is the traditional. Oh dear, scared. No, <laughs> it's, it's cool. Uh, what do you need to work on next, then, in order to become a better man? Brilliant question. Um. What do I need to work on? Do you know what? what? The things I'm still working on, I think I still need to uh, to master those. Patience. My patience is much better. Um, and weathering again these things i said i said resilience patience and acceptance uh -huh. um they're 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 big things for me that i learned when i went through that a tough spot i haven't mastered those that's ongoing um and they're the things the key ones that i'm constantly working on and disappointments that was the, that was the fourth one Disappointments, acceptance, and patience. Resilience is kind of a a, um, um, a a knock on effect, I guess, from from those. You build resilience from weathering disappointments and resilience, um, disappointments and and acceptance and, and having patience. But disappointments used to cripple me. Mm. Um, but I did have my first test where, like I said earlier, I had a script optioned, and I was like, I promised myself never to celebrate now. And that's one of the key lessons from Olga I've learned in life. Never celebrate too early. Never celebrate too early. And I've learned that the hard way. Showboating on fucking social media about shit that hasn't happened. Mm. Um, and that's maybe why I didn't do that with the Tom Hardy project. And rightly so, because it didn't yeah, come to anything. Point. And yeah. I would have looked silly. Um, so one of the things is... is um, is not celebrating uh, too early and having the the patience going forward and also that was what i was going to say learning to deal with disappointments so i did have a script optioned um, and it was one of my babies and I, it was all looking good this movie was going to happen last year this year and told a couple of people in a healthy way wasn't bragging but this is one of these ones <coughs> who went back to the drawing board and the, the plan that I sort of had is moving. I always said, I don't know if I'm, what I'm doing is, um, I don't know if what I'm doing is going to work, um, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go at it. Um, and it came to fruition and it was gonna happen and it didn't happen, just fell through. 
and there was no emotion. Mm. And I said to Olga, I'm not celebrating this until I've seen the final cut and it's screening. Then I'll celebrate. <laughs> not even when I'm on set. Yeah. And I've learned that the hard way. Um, and I didn't even get over the first hurdle. So it's kind of just gone quiet, died a death. No one's responding to me. Um, and the day that I kind of realised that it weren't happening, I just kind of went, hmm. if it did happen, it would have been great. It hasn't happened. Maybe someone else will pick it up. And I just kind of went out on my bike, thought about it a bit, but wasn't over whelmed with disappointment and bitter rage mm. that it hadn't happened um, because I knew it was a possibility a huge possibility that it wouldn't happen and I tempered myself for that um, so that when it didn't happen or if it didn't happen um, I was okay with it but I truly believe it will come back around again and when it does I'll be ready Beautiful way to end this podcast. I'm, I mean, I'm genuinely happy for you to hear. Thank you. I mean, I love you, man. I think you're great. So to to know you're happy in your home and with all going, so yeah, it's great to hear, man. Thanks, man. Love speaking to you as always, man. And you, bro. I love hanging around with you. You've got that energy about you. It makes me feel good. Well, it's good to have a beer. I'm with, with me all day, so you look at bastard. the moment. It's okay. <laughs> at the moment, it's good. But there was a time where it wasn't any good to be with oh, me no. all day. And I like hearing about that. I like hearing about those struggles, man. It's important. Of course it is. I think other people need to wear them as well. Of course, mate. Yeah, because they... life ain't always where you're at now. Yeah. You know, it's not always there. It's not always in that good spot. So to share that, it's like, oh, that's normal. Absolutely. Normal. Mate, you're a legend. No, any time. Fucking you. hell, we've done wow well there, two hours. I need another Shit. piss. No, half one. Oh, yeah, two yeah, hours. Yeah, two, yeah. Uh, two hours on the clock. Oh, right. But that was a piss break as well. Yeah, but better put that. I need Sorry, Nicole. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> Uh, nice one, brother. Anytime. Yeah, cool.